And we are live indeed. Welcome to another episode of a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign called The Great Confusion, part of Legends of the Drowned Isles, campaign two in fact. I am the host and GM, I am Mark the Encaffeinated One, very happy to welcome once more you and my players back to the table. Uh, starting on my left with Pat. Hi, my name is Pat, and I am playing Silas Marsh, Fishman of Fishmen. <laughs> Fishman, I'm, Fisherman. I'm Marie, and uh, I thought we were just doing a test, so I had my volume down for the actual page. Surprise. It's a, Surprise. It's a live, we're doing it live. It's a live test. Surprise. Okay, I'm going to turn that down again, just make sure we can hear everyone. <laughs> I can hear me. Good start. And Nax? Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half orc cleric, and I successfully made the con save versus COVID, so now I'm here today. Yay. That's right. Uh, you have your divine, divine domain. I'm hoping you ate lots of hot food, spicy food in character, and just burned oh, away yeah. the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so we return back to on the western coast of Eskis, a tiny island among the 55 islands of Omesha. Previously, folks had spent a considerable amount of time in a strange pseudo-dimension altered party type thing. The day after that party, people reconvened to discuss what went on. Some discussion was had. A few guests came to that discussion, two people who've now insisted on becoming uh, much more associated, uh, Melora Cartwright's daughter of Arwen Cartwright, and uh, uh, let's say paramour, let's use a fancy word, paramour of, uh, of Medric, whether Medric agrees or not, <laughs> and also uh, Captain Olian Verendel, the leader of the Guard of Ilthvader, who has carried on a very formal romance, potentially, with uh, Annie who he knows also to be Annalise of a far-off and yet ever-present kingdom. But as you were discussing things and decided to take it to a more private venue rather than the general hall of the Three Bells, back to Annie's room to discuss the, the world and potentially universe-spanning matters, uh, Melora happened to notice out the window something just behind the inn, a strange glow from down the street. Uh, that glow is spawned into a semicircular ring of energy, glowing and pulsing red, crackling around the edges, and through which emerged a number of figures. One relatively large. I went looking for the actual size of the Balagura. It always described it as large. It's actually about eight feet tall, so it's not not uh, multi-square uh, spanning. It's it's relatively uh, humanoid size. But it is a massive, red-furred, uh, ape-like creature with a nasty temperament. But a, a surprising amount of intelligence in its eyes. But it came tearing through this extra-dimensional opening. Meanwhile, around it uh, flew out four shadow-like creatures. I think originally only three, but a fourth one has joined them. Flowing out from either side. One, in fact, flies out from what seems like the other side of the opening which itself remains somewhat op opaque. You can imagine the texture of the center of this portal uh, kind of looks like... Um, have any of you had uh, tooth work done and they had to put a, 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 a dental dam in? That's the kind of, the kind of substance I'm thinking about, the sort of rubbery, thin rubbery plastic that seems to, to moderate back and forth. Uh, just kind of strange. There is one correction we do have to make in the lore as we were discussing it last time, and I don't know if we did it at the very end. I know that we discussed it afterwards, uh, and that is me uh, forgetting exactly what the lineage of the kingdom of Alaria is. Uh, in fact, it was Annie's mother, who is the queen, and while her father is the king, it, the uh, line actually runs through the, uh, the women of the family. Uh, and so the uncle we were talking about is actually her uh, mother's brother, not her father's brother. I think the rest of it uh, should be uh, still relatively accurate. 
<laughs> I think yes. that, we, uh, that, that, is, that is why I thought that it was my father because I knew that he had something to do with boats before he married my mother. Right, right. Which was the part that I remembered, but then I forgot about the rest of it. So, yes. <laughs> Um, so, in fact, uh, the the uh, Admiral Swainer uh, um, Montrose was your mother's uh, mother's brother or mother's uncle. I think it was mother's brother. Mother's brother, yeah. right? Older because brother. he was he was in line to inherit, and he was an older brother, but in fact had turned his his attention towards the Admiralty, and then perished at strangely at sea. Um, so that. That mystery set aside for the moment, as crazy creatures are now taking up the street outside. Uh, I have gone ahead and... Uh, we'll wait for the map to ship, shift over here, just to make sure. There we go. I've gone ahead and placed the characters on the map and the relative positions of some of the things you see. This is just another street within uh, within Elthvater. Um May or may not be accurate to the description of where... Uh, the Three Bells was. This is a map I made up a while ago because I wanted to have multiple blocks to potentially have chases and fights and all that sort of thing, and I thought, this map looks good enough. Um, it works. I more or less assume that you all came out to the uh, the same side of the street, the same back of the street. Mm -hmm. um, further down the street, you can see, uh, if you have your Roll20 open, you can see there is a portal, which is sort of sparking and arcing. Um, it doesn't have a consistent form. Its shape, while roughly uh, round, uh, seems to shift and shake and change. Um, down the street, you do see these things flying, but as you come out to witness them, um, you actually will see that uh, two of them that were closest to you veer off in either direction flying. They're relatively small humanoid creatures with uh, deep black wings that seem to have lots of uh, barbs along them. The one more that flew out behind uh, the portal is now flying away. And in fact, will uh, go off the map um, from your perspective. Uh, for an orientation, um, the west side of the map corresponds to toward the water. Um, so the east side is if you actually map it, it's more closer to northeast, but that is towards the main entrance, towards the main road, towards the uh, large plaza, whereas the uh, approximately. Um, again, not an exact representation. Can I have perception checks from everyone, please? I do have a question. Sure. Um, does this look like what happened when we were at that like strange library place when you're at the strange library place you know how many strange With libraries Dudex. i've introduced in, in these games <laughs> in dudex right, dudex uh, secret island yeah um yeah. go ahead and make an arcana roll uh, on that one uh, looks like an eight perception from uh, medrick can it be a history remembering check <laughs> <laughs> uh, it can. It'll give you less information. It's all good. Okay. I just want to know if it looks like it. Uh, and a 15 uh, perception from Silas. So that's my history. history. So uh, from the perspective of Annie just trying to remember things, uh, it feels or looks very much like the same sort of breach. It does not have the same characteristics around it. That one was more of a, more greenish in color. It had more of, a, for lack of a better term, more of an aquatic theme to it, whereas this one definitely has much uh, redder and reddish glowing, almost painful look. Um, the other one was more like a formal portal. This resembles more like a scar that was cut into the face of the of the world. Okay. Uh, Silas and Annie, as you're looking down and trying to assess the situation, both of you notice, um, not too far away from the portal, standing on top of a three-story building, uh, is a, uh, humanoid standing figure, looks somewhat, uh, masculine, uh, dressed in all white, who's holding a, or holding his hands over what looks like an open book, which is suspended by... Uh, a uh, what looks like a magical pedestal. 
and seems to be reading through that book. Um, make of that as you will. Um, in the moment of seeing all of this and seeing the ones veering off, uh, Verandel, um <laughs> looks around, sees the number of you. You've got this. I'll go get my horse and go after the other two. And does, in fact, because his horse, uh, Dreamfield, was just I, outside. Not, not approving the, this plan. <laughs> Um, I, I could hear that. I could hear that two ways. I'm not improving this plan, or I nod approving this plan. I nod. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so Varendel for the moment will be off the board. Uh, I tried to make it accurate. Uh, the glow or the reddish around you is actually Medric's glow. Okay. Uh, even during the day, it's quite noticeable. Uh, and slightly blinding to Silas, who can see quite well normally. <laughs> and just to confirm, we are level nine, right? Yes, I, I believe, believe so. so. Yeah. Okay. I'm level nine anyway. <laughs> uh, I actually looked at your character sheet to determine that, and it was seven and two, so I took it as to being nine. You have not yes. leveled up recently. Okay, no. so that's why I wanted to make sure, because right. I've been forgetting things. No worries. Kind of preparing a con, everything <laughs> becomes that. So, uh, I guess we're going to have some initiative. Assuming that you're going to jump in. If you just walk away, then we won't bother with initiative. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're, on, we're not just walking away. <laughs> okay. Oops, I forgot to do it properly. I, I got a 14, but I, I didn't select my character. Um, oh, well. It's been so long since we did combat. <laughs> it, it, there wasn't anything on on the sheet until like uh, until I brought it up, and then suddenly everyone appeared. So <laughs> I've got multiples of everyone now. Um, it's got to, uh, huh? They they keep changing things on D, on roll twenty, and it's kind of exciting, but it's also taking me aback because they made all the numbers on the initiative turn order bigger. Uh, okay, so the twenty five is the accurate one for Annie. Arendelle's not there. Uh, Silas got a three. What did you roll uh, uh, for Medric? Fourteen. Okay. Fourteen. Ooh, it feels snappier, too. Uh, oh, that might be what the other was. It doesn't matter. Okay, and I will just put... Which is kind of nice, considering they just put absolutely nothing if you rolled it in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm going to roll these guys... Uh, it says four, but that's actually all of them. Uh, this guy. This week, uh, the integration between... Uh, uh, with uh, Beyond 20 is working quite nicely. And this guy. Although his initiative is less important. Um, oh, and of course that one didn't show up. I said it was working properly, and then it vanished. Hmm. All right, it's not going to show me that, so it's going to be a regular roll. Get my hand, so. Uh, Pardon me, as I press all the wrong buttons. <laughs> all right. uh, I will add him as the man in white. We got an eighteen. All right. That's not right. There we go. All right. It looks as though uh, after they've taken their essentially their surprise round or the same round you were moving to get around, uh, those flying ones are off to the side. You can't see where they are based on the buildings. Most of the buildings here are uh, two stories high. 
one exception being the one that the man in white is on, which is actually uh, three stories high. Um, I'll try to find a spot to place this. But Annie, you are first up to move and to act. I would like to, to mention a habit of mine is getting into my armor before uh, before I go down to breakfast because shit like this has happened before. <laughs> Given the number of times Same. this town has been sieged, I'm totally fine with that. I will take it as an exception when you're not in your armor, which is exactly. probably when you're sleeping or when you're attending formal events. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I... Um, how far is... Things? And I should say the flying things you can assume are 20 feet up. 20 feet up. Or sorry, okay. 40 feet up at this point. And the flying things are the green ones? Um, they are, I guess they're green, yeah. Okay. That's one of them. I have not been in combat for what it feels like forever. Give me um, a moment. You should see a label on them saying flying fiend. Okay. Uh, and I okay, believe you guys I have, have faced off Barrel Girls before, so you're kind of aware of what that is. In this campaign? Um. I thought I'd used them before. If not, um, other campaign. Okay. So here, can I get to this one? Oh, and I will take the eyeball off because we don't need that for this. Aha! Uh -huh. Perfect. I will move up. And holy crap, that's a good start. Nice. Uh, sh that was to the red one. Okay. Yeah, the arrow flies well and true. Um, apparently, you, you had your Wheaties this morning. <laughs> uh, that's a lot. That's good. So, 18. Now everything has stopped. Oh, wait. There we go. So total wait a second. Of 35 is nice. <laughs> uh, piercing, piercing critical. Does this satisfy a uh, no, sneak attack? No, I'm just going. I'm just going to roll it with dice because that math isn't adding up. <laughs> Uh, what do we all. have here? We have... Because it's the piercing damage 5. Mm-hmm. Which is 1d6. Okay. Plus so 12 we'll... sneak attack equaling 17. So, um... Oh, yeah. so... It'd be 35 it would be... for the two of them together, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, does this satisfy uh, a sneak attack no. uh, condition? No, it wouldn't. I don't have advantage, and there's nobody beside them, I don't believe. No allies, anyway. Um, um, so the 18 so it would damage? Just be... No, so that's what the... That, that's why I was just going to re-roll it, because that's what... The totals there are with the sneak attack. Um, is the issue. Yeah, but the, the four are just above it. The base piercing damage is 10, and the piercing critical was 5, so it would just be 15. Yeah, it's a weird calculation, but 15, I think, is the... the, the uh, so D10 plus D4... Uh, or, sorry, 10 plus... So it's a, plus one, plus it four. should be 2D8 plus 4. Oh, okay, so that's... that's that's set up to do d6s right okay oh sorry two, two d6 yes okay d6 yeah so that'd be 15. yep yeah it was a six a five and then plus four yep so th the 10 and the five are the two numbers there the 18 is a weird number that's kind of normal damage no but that's that rolled one I, I, I'm confused. <laughs> so the 10 is 1d6 plus 4. The, the, the d6 actually critted at 6, so it's a total of 10. 
The five is another d6, which which is a five total. So great rolls on damage. Uh, so that's that's the total. If you had sneak attack as well, it oh, rolled a sneak attack, a sneak okay. attack, I was critical like, yeah. damage. Below. Okay. Yeah, the total damages are messed up because it's normally assuming sneak attack all the time, which is not actually correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I was, my brain was not registering the top part. Yeah. So 15 normal damage. And if you'd, if you'd sneak attacked, it would have been an additional 20 damage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, still really good. Uh, 18 is a great opening hit, that's for certain. Um, and okay. it definitely notices it, uh, it growls in uh, anger. And kind of breaks off the shaft of the arrow, uh, the arrowhead's bar buried within it, but not, uh, not, uh, uh, not retrieved. And the arrow is not retrievable. Not that that matters at this point. I'm good on arrows. I think I have like. I think you can afford a few more if you, do, yeah. if you need them. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was your move and an action. Do you have anything else? Um. As a uh, bonus action, give me a second. I forgot how to fight. <laughs> no worries. It's been a while. We haven't been um, done combat for, I think, six months in mm. real time. Uh, Mark, uh, yes. Nax needs to be on the initiative. He had a 14. Medrick's there. But I wasn't. What? Okay, he's not on mine. I'm not on mine either. Oh, well, that's weird. It is on the it is on the master list. Uh, okay. Oh, let me just check. Your, your icon might be on the wrong layer. Uh, let's see here. It's there. Um, um, no one's within 30 feet of me. Okay. Well, nope, that, add, that is all I can do. I will add. Oops. Uh, add actually. I will trust the I'm going one. to dash and duck into there. Okay. Getting a bit of cover. I'll say it's half cover from where you are. Um, uh, did anybody mention the guy in white too, Mac, by the way? Or? I did not. <laughs> Crap. No, I haven't had my turn yet. Okay. So that's Annie's turn. The flying fiends now start moving along. Um, they kind of make a, 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 a slight... Well, it's it's not much more than the flapping of a bird, but from where you are, Annie, you can hear the screams of people as they are vacating the streets, and you have a rough idea of where they are uh, going uh, as they continue to fly along. Um, and this one is going to... In fact, you will see this one, the bottom one, kind of flying along and fly into that square. He's just thirsty. There's a fountain. It's entirely possible. There is a nice gathering, a little little fountain right there. Uh, that's them. Uh, the man in white doesn't do anything visible. Medric, you're up. All right. And you can see it well, on I can't the tracker really... now, right? What? You can see Medric on the tracker now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I, I have to scroll up. He doesn't have a face, but yes. Yeah, I had to add him manually. I don't know what happened there. That was weird. Okay, so this is as far as I can go. Okay. And... So this is how many... Fuck. How do I do the uh, distance line again? Uh, it's the one that looks like a ruler. Right. Yeah, I don't think I have anything that reaches 80 feet. Unless. But what I will do, I'll grab the uh, big gravel orb out of my backpack, put it on the ground, say, like, motherfucker, and <laughs> Graveler's going to pop up. <laughs> I forgot what the, the keyword for that was. <laughs> I, I, I will, I'll never forget. <laughs> uh, and in fact, Graveler does appear in front of you. Oh, yeah. Uh, just double check that you can control him. I think. Uh, can you control him? I think we're yep. all supposed to be able to. Control. You should be able to, yeah. I just want to make sure. Yep. Okay, there he is. And Graveler will go on your turn. Just make it easy. All right.
Um, for clarity's sake, this is a road, so this is worked stone. Not uh, okay. not loose stone or gravel. Oh, so, so we can't like do the whole like arrow thing? No, unfortunately. Oh, well. He is a bag of hit points. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. You a have bag of hit points sheet. that has multi attack and does damage. <laughs> uh, you have his character sheet, I believe, Nax? Yeah. I was opening it up right now. <laughs> yeah, here it is. And is he going now, or is, it, is he just going on my next turn? Uh, he'll go now. Okay. So he will move forward. One. He's only got 20 feet of movement, I believe. Yeah, speed yes, 20. He's slow. <laughs> he's slow, but he punch three times. Punch, punch, punch. And bite. Uh, is he going to run to get a little closer? Yeah, I suppose. Okay. Uh, does he make? Does he get to make a perception check? Sure. Why not? What does he have for pres- oh, here we go. Oh, no. So, do I just make, like, an int roll? If it isn't perception, have perception, then it would be... I believe it's... Oh, int. perception plus six, yeah. Yeah, it would be wisdom. Wisdom, yeah. actually, yeah. He does have perception. Uh, 13? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's kind of noticing the carnage. That's about it. Okay. All right. Uh, big, bad, red. Uh, let's see has been attacked you can see him readying for the the creature that's just appeared sort of hunching down a little bit uh, but then reaches back and sort of shoves its fist through the portal and there's a brief moment where it sort of holds there and you can see its strength uh, in its arms it's sort of quivering a little bit uh, and through the portal it reaches in and pulls another one of them Oh, no, that ain't good. It kind of stumbles forward uh, beside the first. And there's some, some snarled conversation back and forth between the two of them. Not really words, just sort of intelligent but wordless uh, communication. Uh, and it sort of gestures down down the way. That one does not have a round this, or does not have a, an action this round. Its action was coming through the portal. Um... Silas, you're up next. Okay. Well, Silas is going to move forward first. Three, six. Uh, and then he is going to... Oh, I forgot Melora. Summon an aberration ally of his. Uh-oh, this is new. You can use an eyeball for it, because it's a beholder kin. Nice. <laughs> uh, just one second. I forgot to put Melora on the initiative. Okay, so she will go uh, after man in white. So I'm just going to have her move up. That's the only thing she's really going to be doing this round. Anyway, because she does not have... Whoa! Almost distorted her. Uh, she does not have... What's going on here? Oh. <laughs> Two keyboards. If you hit one of the keyboards, it does nothing for the other computer. Note to self. Um, she starts running up towards the thing and actually passes right by <laughs> you, Medric, uh, as she's running quite swiftly in, in uh, those uh, hard flats she tends to wear. She's drawn out two daggers from you're not exactly sure where. She didn't seem to be armed, but she is most definitely armed. Maybe taking a cue oh. from everybody else that's also... <laughs> uh, I mean, sorry. I, I usually don't look armed, but... Uh, and I will bring... Uh, I'll tell her, be careful. These things don't fuck around. I don't even know what these things are. Where does this this thing appear? Somewhere within 90 feet of me. Okay. Uh, I can 
controlled by. That will give you control over the eye. And you Check. can place it where you, where you like. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. It's going to appear here, right behind Graveler. Okay. And describe what this thing actually looks like. Okay. Uh, it is a... Uh, the thing. Um, basically, it's a big eyeball creature, uh, but with a pair of uh, additional eye stalks. I don't think we've ever fought a Beholder before, so we wouldn't really have a reference for that. Um, Tauzek Riva, you saw him in the pocket dimension, in the haunted okay. house. That'd be the Did one this one have a bow tie, though? No. Oh. oh. Also, okay. this one this one is smaller. It's only a few feet across. And like I said, only two eye stalks. Okay. But it is floating in the air. Okay. And what does it look like as it manifests? Does it just sort of fade into existence, or is it... <laughs> <laughs> Now you have to have a headband you wear with a couple of eye stocks on it just to... Mm. Um, I'd cosplay. say a... Uh, there's another rift that opens up, but this one is kind of watery and blue behind it, and this floats out. Uh, and Silas will give a quick shout of, It's an ally! <laughs> um, is that convincing to anyone? <laughs> uh, that's up to them they've seen him summon weird uh, allies yep that but a few kinda. fewer eye stocks and no mouth <laughs> uh, I labeled it as by holder it <laughs> <right. laughs> uh, okay uh, so is that uh, I've moved I've acted uh, as a bonus action I'm going to uh, grab three pebbles off the ground and charge them up. Okay. And then the eye beast takes its turn immediately after me. Convenient. I don't have uh, to put it on the on the tracker at all. Nope. It's almost like they learned something from the earlier summon spells <laughs> and made the newer <laughs> summon spells better. Um, uh, Silas will tell it to fly up and kill the flying fiends. Ah, very good. What's so its, on its uh, turn, speed? Uh, its speed is 30, so it's going to go 30 straight up. And first thing is it's going to unleash a couple of beams at Flying Fiend number one there. Okay. What's its range? 150 feet. Nice. Nice. Yep. Um, now, it uses the same attack roll as I do, so I'm just going to make a throw magic stones roll. I'll have to roll different damage, though. 13 on the first one. Uh, that is a hit. Okay. Uh, where's the dice? Uh, oh, I gotta move that out of the way. Is it a magical effect? Yes. Okay. Uh, it is a psychic blast. Oh, all right. Uh, it's this plus seven. So 11 psychic damage. Nice. And uh, then it makes another one. Well, one one at a time here, so I can get caught up. Okay. Uh, so that was eleven points. All right. The next attack is a nine, so that's probably a miss. That is a miss. So uh, as you watch, uh, does it make an audible effect, or is it just a psychic effect? Um. It's pro yeah, it's probably completely silent, just a psychic effect. There, there'd be like a visual. Uh, maybe like a purplish uh, look from both the eye stalks that goes out. Uh, but it because it's psychic, it's just completely silent. I kind of imagine and that the eye, stalks, the eye stalks extend out a little bit, wiggle a little bit. And on the other side, you see the, the flying creature. Uh, it lets out a, a screech of pain and kind of uh, 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 flutters its wings. Uh, kind of trying to make, remain stable in the face of a massive headache. <laughs> All right. That is my turn. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. 
it is Annie's turn once more. Hello, hello. Um, so I am going to um, basically peek around the corner and use steady aim. Okay. Uh, and aim at the red guy that I already shot. All right. look for another natural 20 just for fun pretty darn <laughs> close pretty darn close 25 is most definitely a hit that does give me sneak attack damage ah so yes 20 total damage well did you actually hide or just move there i did steady aim which gives me advantage oh right yep you're right all right so 20 total damage nice 20 total damage and it um it is magical damage if that has anything. Uh, not in this case. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, that is Annie's turn. The Flying Fiends. Um, the one down by the waterfall has uh, spun around, and there's a bit of a crowd, not a waterfall, sorry, a fountain. There's a bit of a crowd there that are kind of trying to sit back it um annie from your perspective you can see it sort of looking down around the around the crowd mm -hmm. um as if it's looking for something and then it dives in towards the crowd and i don't have skills but this will do it dives down into the crowd and the crowd screeches and parts below it and then leaps back up into the air and you can see it's now carrying something. Or perhaps you might more appropriately say, carrying someone. Someone very uh -oh. small. Uh, actually, sorry, he's not very... Uh, duh, duh, duh. Let me see. Oh, no, it is her. So, a very small person. Or perhaps a child. And at that point, it starts flying back towards the... Uh, Towards the portal. Half of its movement left. And just out of your sight. But it grabs someone from the crowd. I, I will say it, it has a child or some. The, the one that went there has a child. Okay. Uh, this one you don't see, but it's flying in there. Technically in there. Uh, the one that was hit by the psychic rays. Uh, let's see, what is it going to do? I think it's it's going to uh, shout and scream and then does this sort of diving whip where it throws its shoulder down, gains a bit of extra momentum from the little little loss of height and whips its tail out and launches these large spines towards uh, the eye stock creature uh, by Holder. Um, first uh, attempt is a 12 to hit. Does that hit the by holder? No, it has a 15. Okay, and the second attempt, even worse. Um, but then it kind of knows that it's in danger, so it flies off into the alleyway. So I'll make sure I know. Uh, there. Uh, and that's all of them. Uh, the man in white does not seem to be doing anything that you notice, uh, except for sort of looking at the book. Uh, Melora. Uh, let's see, what is Melora going to do? She heard the call about a child. Uh, so can she do anything about that? Well, she's going to try. And she's going to run. Uh, actually, do do do. Yes, there. Uh, she's going to run down into that alley. She's going to sprint, in fact, uh, to get down there. And with a bonus action 
This character sheet is just a... I haven't made up a full one for Melora yet. So you'll see it say Longbow. It actually is her throwing a dagger at the creature as a bonus action. And Does the creature have to make a save to hold on to the child? <laughs> uh, well, we shall see. That hit, in fact, does five piercing damage as one of her daggers sinks into its side. It lets out a massive cry. And yes, makes a saving throw. It is 40 feet in the air. Uh-oh. Uh, makes a constitution saving throw. Um, but does manage to... I'm treating it like concentration. Manages to hold on to uh, the wriggling uh, package. And you hear very loudly and very um, sailor-like, I guess you might say. Melora swears... Uh, uh, come back here, you bastard. And some other things that I'm not going to repeat. Uh, Medric. Right, I will go as far ahead as I can. Here. And ruler. Okay, I'll cast a spiritual weapon on that Belgura. The top yeah. one. You thought you had me, but I have actually got all of those things <laughs> nice. ready and located. Uh, so I will. Oops. I will. What spot? Uh, on on the top Bulgara. So like anywhere near there. So like there. Yeah. And you should have. Let's see if this set up. Uh, uh, controlled by Nax. You should be able to handle it now. If you need to move it around. Uh, do you see a counter on that uh, that icon when you click on it? Yep, it says 10. Okay. So that's 10 rounds at the last. It's an easy way to keep yep. track of it. Um, and it makes an attack, I'm assuming? It does. All right. And I, I, I used to have it written down like... Fuck's sake, I just looked at it. Damn it. So it's my modifier plus anything... Loading. It's your spell attack modifier. It should be. Okay. Which is... Seven. Okay. Sixteen to hit. Sixteen hits. Force damage equal to 1d8 plus spellcasting ability. Okay, cool. Nine. Nice. Uh, and uh, remind me again what the... F it is a flaming hammer, flaming spear? Yeah. What's the form of that? It's a spinning flaming hammer. All right. um, I hate to bring it up, but that, <coughs> it's a d8 plus your spellcasting stat modifier, not the plus Oh, seven. which one but is that? It's just your... You should have plus three wisdom, I think. So okay, got just it. be five. Okay. Yeah, because I, I thought seven seems a little high. <laughs> oh, for the damage. So that yeah. would be uh, four less? Yeah. Okay. Well, it still hits with some, some definite impact. Um, that was your bonus. Uh, that was its action. Yeah. What is Medric going to do? There's nothing I can really do. I, I could have, like, sprinted ahead. But... You can move, definitely. But I'll, I already moved. I oh, was, like, moved there earlier. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so uh, I don't think that I have any, any additional actions. I will ready my shield and my hammer, for sure. You could move again. Uh, moving again There's is one the... option. You can also go defensive, or you can uh, hold an attack if anything comes close to you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't actually use your action. Okay, I'll move again then. Yep, the Dries of Spiritual Weapon, because that bonus action. Mm. Yeah. Well, he kind of has two, because he has, has that one, and he has uh, <coughs> uh, uh, Graveler, which also goes. Do I make a another perception check by any chance? Sure. 
Okay. Hey, who's that motherfucker up top? In fact, from this distance, you recognize that motherfucker up top. Who, who is he? You saw him briefly at the end of the house. He kind of came out of nowhere, said, it's not time yet, and uh, not time to talk to meet yet, and then vanished out through the front door. Oh, white shirt guy. The, the white-robed uh, person that, in fact, Annie has seen a number of times around town. Medrick has seen previously a couple of times. I think, actually, also Silas has seen him. Yep. Yeah, uh, Silas saw him once or twice. And you can see that he's intently uh, studying a book. What did you roll, 19? Yeah. Um, I will also say that the book has a familiarity to it. It looks like it has a very heavy stone-like cover um, with very thick pages that seem to glow blue into the air above. And he seems to be manipulating some of the things that are in the book. Um, but still mostly intent on studying the book rather than anything else. Um, and it is, all, it is propped up on a, on a pillar of magical energy. Do I have time to ask him to ask him a question? He's 40 feet up from you and 15 feet across the street. So it would be yelling. It can possibly get his attention, but that would be about it. Are you holding that portal open? I'll scream. Okay. Uh, let's see if he actually notices you because he's rather dis uh, absorbed in what he's looking. It will be he makes perception a disadvantage, and that's not rolling it for some reason. Right. Ah. He does indeed look up from what he's doing. Uh, and then, <laughs> however, not quite the response. Looks down at the portal and then puts his finger to his lips. Shh. <laughs> uh, not quite the expect uh, result, result, but he did hear you. He didn't confirm nor deny. Damn it! Is that a yes or a no? <laughs> uh, let's see. I think he didn't now... say kill him, so he's probably helping. <laughs> okay. He, he also like has had multiple chances to harm any of us. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, I'll just see. give him a side eye, and it's like, get back to the battle. He, he's already looking at his book. He, he sort of, as soon as he finished that, he just ignores what's going on. Um, with the perception check, you can notice there is a bit of a, a worried look across his face. Okay. Uh, let's see. Did I leave somebody behind? Oh, that's you. Okay. Uh, the big creature's uh, efforts. Is it Graveler's turn? Uh, sorry, yes, Graveler goes, goes next. So he can get up to here, but then he can't. If he sprints, then he can't hit him. Okay. I'll just have him wait for... Can he hold an action? He certainly can. He will smash anything that comes near him. Then it is their turn Need to figure this out. Okay. Uh, the one that's been hit the most um, sort of grunt something, almost in acceptance to the other one that's there, uh, and then proceeds to charge forward. Um, as it's approaching Graveler, it leaps up into the air, uh, sails over its head for 20 feet to land, and then continue its movement. Riding, running right beside where Annie is. This graph will have a chance to, like... Uh, there will be an opportunity of attack, but that's about it. Right. And it's a single attack. Actually, sorry. He has his reaction, so he can use his, uh, his normal attack. Because nice. he was hold holding it, so... 
I will say he's at disadvantage because it is he has to kind of hop up to catch it because it is specifically Bite. leaping over him. So 23 and 18. Uh, uh, that hits regardless, so that's one of them. Nice. 13 piercing. Yeah. Then three claws. Oh, I actually get to do like all, like all the hits. Well, you because he, he held holding his action. His action. Yeah, right, he held his right, action right. for something to come close, and it did. So okay, so claw one. Uh, that hits. I mean, it might not make two. It. Uh, that one misses. It is a disadvantage because it's because okay. it's actively leaping away. Oh. Uh, that, however, is enough to kill it. In fact. Nice. So it kind of lands in a clump. It will land there because it had the momentum. Wow. Um, but in fact, is is uh, clawed and caught. It, I kind of imagine that Graveler kind of uh, leapt up a little bit. Yeah. Bought, uh, uh, clapped it, uh, it, his like big mouth down, and then it kind of changed the 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 trajectory, and then yeah, just kind of uh, slamming into him. But yes, that is enough to to kill him. Medrick will yell, yeah! Uh, and he lands with a, 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 a lump. Uh, the one that's back there uh, does much the same as the other one had done before. Uh, reaches back, shoves its fist into the portal, and makes a call. And another one appears beside it. Uh, oops. Why is it? Oh. <laughs> doesn't matter if you hit it the wrong keyboard. It doesn't work that way. There we go. And it appears just outside the portal, but unable to do anything this round. Uh, Silas. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um... Silas looks over at Annie and says, would you be in a better position at the top of that building? At the top of where? where With is the he guy going? in white that we need to probably talk to or something. Sure. Okay, then he casts Dimension Door and takes the both of us up here. Okay, that does surprise him as uh, he uh, looks up from his, uh, his book. Um, and he can move up there as well. Uh, looks up from his book. Um, Silas, this close, you recognize this book. Although this is a much better version than the, the, the copy that you have. It's very similar. Dwarf-made stone ah. uh, book of Argente Segus, uh, Segex. Uh, and he appears to be modeling, is one way to put it, I guess. What's happening in the street? You can see a miniature version of the portal there, with all kinds of uh, of numbers and things flying around it. But he looks up and is disrupted from his action uh, to see the two of you there. Silas will hold up his hand, showing the ring, and say, "Are you here to stop the portal?" Um. Well, uh, well, uh, it's complicated. That's kind of his old response. Uh, that was a move action, I believe. Uh, well, I moved, and I... Oh, was that a... Uh, Isn't Dimension Door a move action? A bonus. Um, or is that the other one? But, uh, shoot, I didn't put it on that sheet. Let me look that up. Uh, it's not a move action. It's either bonus or uh, regular, but let me just check. C, D, Dimension Door, da, 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 one action. Okay. okay. So I got bonus actions left. Um, casting time is a bonus action. Uh, okay. Well, I don't really have any bonus actions I can use because the stone's already charged up, but it's actually an action to throw them. Um, Silas uses bonus action to just ask the guy, are you with the demons? 
uh, not really a bonus action, but uh, it's 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 a question that hangs in the air until it's his turn. Yeah. Um, now the beholder is going to float up thirty more feet, so it's at sixty feet. Okay. Uh, Let me put a little. This fiend over here, the one beside our building, did that you... one go down into the alley? Uh, you cannot see it from where you are. Can it see it from where it is? No. There's okay, a, that's the three-story building in its way. Yep. Uh, what about the one over here that had grabbed someone? Um, from that angle, yeah, I think it can make it out. Okay, then double psychic blast. Okay. Uh, that is an attack, right? Not a save. Yep, that's a twenty-six. Uh, oh, this didn't. Uh, and ignore the damage. I have to roll the damage separately. Uh, well, twenty-six definitely hits. <laughs> it is eleven psychic damage. Okay. Second attack is a twenty-two. That is definitely a hit. For thirteen psychic damage. And it goes down, dropping the child. Hopefully, the child's okay. Hopefully, the child falls into the the like fountain. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's not a, it's, uh, sadly, <laughs> sadly, the byholder does not care. So, ooh, that's not good. As the child disappears into the crowd or into the the ground, out of well, your vision even from where you are, and you do hear Melora uh, shouting, "No!" That's about it. That ain't uh, good. That ain't good. Uh, okay, and that... that is it for its turn. Okay, is that it for Silas too? Oh yeah. Okay, Annie. Okay, so I'm we're on the roof of a third story. That's right. Of a three story building. Okay. Um, you can see that thing has just fallen out of the sky. Yeah, which is not ideal. Can I see this one though? Uh, no, same problem. No. You're on a three story building. It's below the the edge of it. Okay. Um, so I will hit the, uh, this one, um, again, steady aim. Okay. Don't really have anywhere to, to move to right now, so might as well. 19. 19's definitely a hit. And that was the, the top new one or the one that was before? This one? Uh, the one that was there before. Okay. Oh, that rolled. Uh, so that was six, or yeah, uh, the twenty-four damage because twenty-four damage. Steady aim. Okay. Steady aim was the best. It made like sneak attacks actually usable. At range, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 killer. Uh, it lets out a loud screech, this time not actually knocking the arrow out like the other one did, just sort of letting it there and then flexing and, and uh, growling. Uh, let's see. That would be... That's your turn? Yeah, that would be my bonus and my action. So. Okay. The Flying Fiends. Let's see here. Uh... Oh, yes, and I will say, then you better start talking, old man. Uh, this one. I'll take a trip around and then fly over to swoop and attack at Annie. So the... the uh, the one you were thinking about, the one that dip, dipped down, maybe responding to the shout of the larger gorilla type thing, uh, fl uh, flies upward and takes a diving attack towards you. Uh, let's see. Um, first with its toothy maw. I don't think a six hits. Apparently all the rolls I'm going to make are going to be really bad. Uh, and then one with what looks like a large... Um, bone made fork. Uh, it looks almost like it's made of the same uh, large spines it has. That also rolls a six. Wow. I'm 
I'm amazed just how the bad same, they roll. Same potential damage, too. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, well, not exactly, but yeah. Um, that was terrible. So uh, it will continue to fly on by. Uh, it does not provoke attacks of opportunity when it does so, because that's its thing. Uh, and kind of fly uh, towards the other roof. So it's kind of hovering above the roof over there. That one's dead. That one is in search of its quarry. Uh, I will make a check. Let's see if it finds it. Did that that didn't show up anywhere? <laughs> there we go. Wow, that is impossible. <laughs> six 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 for my demonoid things. That's just not good. <clears throat> well, it continues to rummage around then, not finding what it was looking for. Uh His turn. Um, hmm. Somewhat disturbed by the creature that flew this close and the fact that you're also kind of drawing attention to him, um, you see him, uh, the man in white, uh, close the book, which the blue glow uh, disappears below it, uh, and take a step off the edge of the ledge. Uh, and then... Uh, which way do you want to do that? Uh, yeah, he's done that before. So very similar to what, uh, what uh, uh, Silas had done. You see him vanish through a, a whitish doorway to stand on the opposite corner of a building, open up his book again, and start examining the portal. <laughs> that is his action. Uh, Melora. He's asking for an oh. arrow. That was <laughs> rude. He didn't answer my question either. He did not. Um, it's almost as though he's doing something with all of his concentration. Um, Melora will run forward, and that's... Um, that's all you can hear or see from that direction. But she does not appear again. Uh, Medric. I heard Melora say, like, no. So, of course, I'm going to go Before, investigate. Yeah. Okay. And you can see that she's cradling a, uh, a young girl uh, who looks like she's covered in blood, probably from the impact, uh, right around where the bloody body of this, this uh, spined creature has landed. She sees you because your light precedes you uh, and then looks at you pleadingly. Do something, please. Well, I'm assuming if she, say, if he, if she says do something, it means like the, ch the child is like still alive and will in, in game terms making death saves. So it's going to get a healing word. Okay. And get five hit points. All right. You see the, the child's, uh, the, the sort of warm glow of Ignis's uh, fire uh, flow over her. You can see that um, even as used to as she is to your magic, Melora still flinches a little bit when this, this sort of flame crawls over the child. Uh, and the child coughs a bit and then kind of kicks a little bit in her arms. Once that gets you back. heal him to a nice golden brown. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Now it's their turn. Let's see. What are they going to do? Graveler. Spiritual oh, weapon. Sorry. Yep. Sorry. All right. Spiritual we weapon. Do, so it's it does. <laughs> uh, who's so a spell attack modifier. That's a three, right? Who's it attacking? Because there's this new one here and the one that was there before. What, do you have any of them taken damage? Uh, the top one was shot by Annie with an arrow. Okay. Then the top one's going to get smacked by a flaming hammer. Okay. Or not. Uh, an eight will not do it if that's an attack roll. No, you have plus seven to hit, but only plus three to damage. Okay. So that's four more. Yeah, that yeah. would have been a 12. 12 I is still, unfortunately, not a hit. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll move the hammer just so I can put Graveler in the way. <laughs> okay. So Graveler will bite as soon as I find his window. Here we go. Om nom nom. Uh, that is a hit. Uh, 
Don't Grub. forget his three claws. Yeah, then Graveler will punch. The blender. Uh, that is also a hit. Uppercut. That is a miss. Backhand. 14, maybe? Uh, 14 is a miss. Curses. Well, he did, he did his best. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're starting to reach his level of toughness, uh, or some of us are, but yeah, his damage output is still more than us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, sure. Uh, this one is engaged with... Uh, the top one is engaged with Graveler at the moment. Yeah. So it will reach forward and attempt to grapple Grappler. And things are not appearing. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, really? This can't be right. I can't be rolling <laughs> six every time. That doesn't make any sense. The fact that you're rolling a different number on, on the, like... That can't be right. Second one is just hilarious. <laughs> okay. That's just weird. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Grappler has 19 AC, so that does not work. Uh, it's not an AC-based. It'd be a, a versus okay. his athletics. Or acrobatics. Um... Which is still pretty high, that? I suspect, because it would be based off of his strength. So do I just uh, do a strength roll? Yes. Um, if he doesn't probably. have athletics. It's probably going to beat a six because, frankly, everything beats a six. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, I'd be with you if the second die wasn't a different number every time. I, it's, <laughs> it is bizarre. It is bizarre. There's supposed to be a threat, and they're like, I don't know what to do. Well, the other one, <laughs> the other one is going to, well, he has to do it. Uh, he reaches in to the portal and once more achieves another of his allies that appears just behind. That is both of their turns this time. Um... Actually, even with advantage, it wouldn't matter. Um, yeah, no, they're going to stay where they are. Um, yeah. yeah, they'll stay where they are. Uh, Silas, you're up. Okay. Well, I have no more big spells, so we're kind of stuck in this roof. Uh, I am going to throw a magic rock at the flying fiend number one. Okay. Uh, that is a 12 to hit. Uh, that misses. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't really have a bonus action thing, I don't think. Um, oh, come on. Well, yeah, Silas will, uh, just come over here. And that'll be that. Um, let's see. Both of these flying fiends near us are visible. No. Only the one across the, the road is, is visible to you. Only this one. You do not see the other one. Okay. Then the by holder will move. Uh, say 15 feet further and up to 75 feet. Uh, and he'll hit 
this flying fiend one. It's okay. the closest. Uh, 18 to hit. Absolutely. And that's uh, four damage. Oh, no, it's a different thing, right? No, uh, that's eight damage. Eight damage. Oof. Eight psychic. Wow, on a one, you do an eight damage. How's that? Yep. Is it it's plus seven. Plus seven. Wow. Uh, so how is it? That's uh, amazing. Man, that really did the, uh, up the uh, summons. Yeah, it's fairly weak physically, but yeah, it's got a really good uh, damage bonus. It, it's fairly weak physically, but it can hit what 120 feet. Yeah, no, that's pretty awesome. 150. Yeah. yeah, it's a gun turret. Yeah. Uh, so 18 to hit. I'm going to definitely step up all the combat, the combat against you guys because it's a lot more powerful than I remembered. Ten psychic. Uh, so that's an 18 to hit for the same one, and 10 Psychic will kill it. Yay! Uh, it's crushed uh, internally. And gives a, a very terrible scream as it dies. See, you, you keep doing good, by Holder. He goes, bye, 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 bye. All right. In my head, because it has no mouth. And that's it for me. All right. Uh, yep, that's not going to matter. So, uh, Annie, you're up. Okay. So, Graveler is currently beside the mm -hmm. uh, these guys. So, I'm going to shoot at the, the one that we've been hitting, okay. the damage run. This guy. Uh, oh, definitely 26. hits. So 24 damage. Because you guys never miss, and I never hit. This is getting a little bit one-sided. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. They keep pulling more out of the, the portal. We're not getting very far. even though Yeah, because I remember these things being painful in the other campaign. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we're just breaking even at the moment. We're basically just in a slap fight of them bringing more in and us like shooting them down before we can get. Um, so uh, 24 damage on that one, it's still up. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, I will use, shoot. How far up am I? Uh, you're on a third floor. So about a little over 30 feet. Okay. Shit. I'm going to, is it, what's the roof situation here? Is there like a lip? Is it like a like sloped roof? Is it? It's, it's a lip. You can okay. see a couple of chairs that people have come up here probably to get away from everything else. Okay. Uh, I am going to try to crouch behind the lip. Okay. It's only going to count as half cover. You have to lie down if you're actually going to try to get full cover or hide. Uh, okay, that's your turn. That will be my turn, yep. I'm slightly too far to give people advantage. Let's see, this one now. Once again, roll its... Nope, it's still digging. It flipped the six upside down, though. Hmm? It oh, flipped yes. your six upside down. That doesn't help, but yes. <laughs> uh, thank you for trying to make me feel better about really how, how incredibly bad my rolls have been. I'm, I'm Usually impressed. it's been the other way around, to yeah. be fair. Mm. I mean, I Random must have used up, used up all those good, good rolls before, as they say. Uh, this one, however, is returning from its query. Um, and so, let's see who can see that. Yeah. I don't think any of you can see that. Um, I will have... Silas and Annie can make perception checks at disadvantage. Wow. <sighs> Annie is paying attention. Uh, Considering on, that I have a plus one. <laughs> yeah, no, and you're on the lookout for anything that's coming. You can barely see it, uh, but you do make out the wings uh, kind of uh, beating as this, again, fairly small creature. It's only, it's, it's about the size of a halfling itself. Um, really, 
uh, but its wingspan makes it look a lot larger. Uh, and it is uh, clutching uh, a, uh, a piece of wood almost its size as it's carrying it back. It's just going to appear at that position right now. That's as far as it got. Basically, it was off board. Now it's come back on board. Uh, and I think that's all for those guys. Uh, the man in white can now make a roll. It took forever for that to happen. But now can make a roll. It's a pretty good roll. Uh, okay. Um, you hear a, 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 a shout of delight uh, from the uh, man in white on the other side. Aha! Uh, and he begins casting a spell. Nothing he does is fast. Uh, Melora. Uh... Seeing that the child is okay, and I, I, the, the parents of the child actually come over, uh, she kind of hands it to him. She's covered in the child's blood, but uh, from where you are, uh, Medric, you see a gleam in her eye, an anger that has turned to action as she flips out both daggers and charges at the large thing that is nearest to her. Uh oh. And we'll make two attacks. Um, again, I don't have that proper sheet in front of me, so it's going to look like. Well, actually, short sword is the same, so do that one. Uh, that's a hit, and that's a crit. Your numbers are great. <laughs> so only only when I'm trying to kill my own NPCs <laughs> am I able to do anything. Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, let's see. Yes, both are hits. So um, first one is... Oh, yeah, he's been beaten up a little bit, too. Uh, minus nine. Still The one alive. we've been hitting is the top one. Yep. Yeah, so this one hasn't been touched yet. Uh, it, it was touched because it was there before. Um, okay. The one, the one above uh, is the replacement of the first one, which was lost. Okay. Because so I was pretty sure that we had all basically ganged up on the one. And then it was replaced by the other one. I mean, it is small on my screen. I'm going to zoom in for my own purposes here, too. But uh, um, I can't go back and, and change the numbers now. But... Uh, um, they both are somewhat wounded. In fact, the second come on even more wounded now uh, after she takes the daggers and stabs quite fiercely. Critical hit. Nothing like that. All right. That's Melora doing all of my dirty business. Uh, mm -hmm. Medric, you're up. As you see, Melora right. charge the gigantic things that probably she shouldn't, but she's going to anyway. I'll go next to her. And as I as I pass by the, the Chops family, I'll let them know. I'll like, just look directly at them. It's like, we need to talk to you later. But for now, get her to safety. And you, you okay. hear after you, thank you, thank you so much. So the Bargura, the Bargura that Melora is attacking will also be getting hit with a hammer. All right. Um, Perfect. So it's plus... Snake was, attack on all of them. It's proficiency bonus plus strength bonus, right? For do it. Um... Yes, if it's a weapon you're yeah. proficient with, yes, it should be. Bah, no my rolls. That is a miss. Hey, the threes yeah. have spread to someone else. Boo. <laughs> and then, uh, spiritual weapon will attack the top one. Okay. Nine. Damn it. That's a miss. Graveler. Fight. That is a miss. Damn it. Kla, 14. That is a miss. That is a, a miss. Oof. Damn it. Oof. Take wow. your shitty luck back, please. <laughs> <laughs> the Bar no. Gura has uh, is using the time-worn defense of putting its hand on the, the Zorn's head and just keeping it away. That's where it keeps its mouth, though. That doesn't seem like yeah. a smart idea. Not a wise idea. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> it's, well, it's okay, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's got a it's got a large toothpick that is stuck between the the jaws of the of the creature. Uh, okay, well that was an exciting round. Um, a lot happened. A lot of nothing. <laughs> a lot of nothing. It is now their turn. Uh, this one that is getting beat up uh, growls in anger and kind of beats its fist on the ground and will try once more to uh, to uh, 
to fight Graveler, but it's going to do so in a little different way. Uh, it is going to try to grab him, but grab him with fists, which kind of makes it the same thing. Um, so that means it gets its multi-attack to do that. Um, did it roll? No, it didn't roll. Does a 15 hit him? I don't think so. Nope. And how about... Oh, sorry, 21. It's with advantage because he is okay. uh, freaking out, is reckless. So, yes, he manages to grab Graveler um, and kind of hold on to him. Maybe it's because he's, he's moved now from sort of holding him at bay to holding him. <laughs> uh, and here's where I will probably apologize. Because he then pulls Graveler through the portal. No. And they vanish through the other side. Damn it. We'll get him back, right? Um, to be fair, it took Possibly. me four turns to do that. <laughs> and he could have died long before it actually happened. Um, the one that's being double teamed by Melora and by Medric because she was the first one in its way. Uh, and it will attempt to bite her uh, and fail. Uh, attempt to punch and fail. Attempt to punch and fail. Actually, what is her AC? Pretty sure it's... Yep, no, it's fine. So yeah, it attempts to do all of that. Uh... The other one seeing the danger. Hmm. What does it want to do first? I think it will go nuts. Beat its fist upon the ground. Scream and attack Medric. So with advantage. First a bite. 21. Does it hit? Yep. For 11 points of piercing damage. Attempt to punch for 23. Yep. Seven points of bludgeoning damage. And then punch again. 26. Wow. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. For six points of bludgeoning damage. As it basically wails on you. Keep this in mind that it was reckless, however. So attacks against it now have advantage. Okay, good. That was the one on the uh, left, right? That's the one on the left. Yeah. Which was already a bit wounded. I think they all got wounded at some point. Oh, you know what happened? No, I know it wasn't wounded. I copied and pasted the old version. <laughs> so <laughs> these actually, that's why these are, are, are coming in wounded. <laughs> that's not right. It's not what it's meant to be. Uh, so sorry, I will have to reset his hit points. Because that makes a lot more sense. It's like, why are they so wounded? So the one on the bottom uh, was attacked by her, but not by as much as I thought. It wasn't it not nearly as close to death. Uh, it took... Uh, 14 points, so. All right. And that is their turns. It's up to Silas now. Okay. Well, Silas is going to throw, I forget, he can actually charge five, not three, so he does have a couple extras, but he's going to throw a magic rock at the flying fiend number two that's carrying something. It's just within his 60-foot range. Uh, make a perception check. Because it, 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 you didn't see it before. Fifteen. Fifteen? Um... Okay, I'll say you can see it and you can you can throw it at no penalty. Okie jokey. Oh. Uh -huh. I'm gonna hex it. Okay. Uh, that's my bonus action. And then I'm gonna throw the rock. I threw a rock at him. <laughs> hey, it's a 23. Hit him in the eyeball. We'll give him a uh, green so Six bludgeoning and two necrotic, so eight total. Nice. Uh, that was my action and my bonus action. Uh, I don't have anything else. The beholder is going to go another 15 feet forward and 15 feet up. So he's now 90 feet up. 
Okay. Uh, and can he see the one? No, he hasn't been able to see it for a bit. He's going to go after the one that he can see. Okay. Uh, Flying Fiend number two. And that is a 19 to hit. That is definitely a hit. For 11 Psychic. Okay, and it is still up. And a 20 to hit. And it is most likely down. For 13. Yes. Yeah, 13 Psychic. It is down, and it and whatever it was carrying is dropped upon the, the ground. Okay. There and is that's... no screaming sound of someone falling. Does not appear to be. You saw it was carrying something that looked like an oblong piece of wood. Perfect. Uh, that's it for Silas and the Beast's turn. Okay. Uh, Annie, you're up. I will... Uh, I was going to shoot that thing, but uh, I guess I will shoot the one that has uh, recklessly attacked. Um, yeah, okay. That's the one on the left, the one that was attacking uh, yeah. Medric. So, oh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is this 100 points yet? <laughs> uh, so. So 44. Damage. Oh, good. wow. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's pretty close. Critical rogue sneak uh, attack. <laughs> yep. Uh, at distance, at range. Yep. <laughs> Uh, it is not down, however, it is looking very, very bad. That arrow sinks all the way to the feathers. And kind of, and actually, Medric, you, you get a little blood splashed on you as you see it pierce through the front. Good. Uh, and that is my turn. Okay. I think. Sounds about right. This poor guy has no idea what's going on. And that's not showing up for some reason. There we go. Still doesn't know what's going on. Okay. Uh, man in white. Casting, casting, casting. Seems very intent on whatever he's doing. You can see now that the, the image of the portal that was projected above his book is now solidified. And he's kind of casting at it. And you can now see silver strands reaching out towards the other portal. Uh, Melora, caught in location. Keen to fight. Is going to be fighting the thing in front of her with her daggers. But unfortunately this time... Stabby the stabby. Stabby the stabby, but the second one does land. The first one does not. As the creature was not enraged uh, in its actions before. But that is her attack, and she is staying where she's at. And kind of fighting beside you, Medric, you see there's a certain fury, and maybe even a slight smile on her face. You get the impression this is not something she gets to do very often, but she's very happy to give it a try. Um, Medric, you're up. All right. Hammer time. Ha! Fuck! I'm assuming you're moving it closer to one or one or the other one. Hmm? All right, it's no, at that, advantage. No, that was his. Uh, or is that your? That was hammer? my hammer swing. Okay. Uh, it'll be at advantage. Yeah. Yep. Seventeen. Okay. I think what Mark hits. was meaning was he's assuming was that you're bringing it, the spiritual yeah. weapon closer. That one's gonna come after. Yep. All right. G8 so yes, plus you five. managed to hit. Uh, what is your For, weapon, by the way? Uh, Warhammer. So it's a D8. I'm okay. I'm, I'm using it one-handed. So uh, it's for for damage rolls. It's dice roll plus strength plus proficiency. Uh, no proficiency. Dice no roll plus proficiency. proficiency. Okay. Just plus strength. Smack nine damage. Okay. Nice. Um, maybe you're aiming for that arrowhead and kind of pound it back into the. Oh, flesh. I am. The hammer will go next to him. Twenty-four. That's a hit. Might as well roll the second time, because you could crit. All right. Uh... No, that's... that's <laughs> the exact opposite. That, that is the opposite of a crit. <laughs> All right. 
But yeah, that, that was... Still ten, uh, well, you rolled earlier. It was 10 damage. Oh, okay. I uh, forgot. Oh, you did roll the damage. Okay. Yeah. All right. It looks like it's on its last legs. Um, and Graveler is no longer under your control. Does he have a chance to, like, break free and come back through the portal? Maybe. But that's not something you know about. Yeah, we'll have to check with the stone after. Uh, well, he makes a strength check anyway, just because on the other <laughs> side of the portal, he's just doing whatever. Okay. Uh, <coughs> that's that. Uh, let's see. The two of them look a bit bad. So, let's see. What is it going to do? I think it's going to... The one facing off against... Um, Melora. Hmm. Could do that, could do that. Hmm... I think uh, it believes in the mission, so it's going to continue forward. Uh, however, it stares at Melora, um, who will make an int save. Uh, again, I'm just using the base stats. I'll have a better sheet for her later. Good save. Uh, I don't think the effect takes... No, oh, what is there? No. Nope. She shakes off whatever was happening. Uh, and does not seem affected by it. Um, let's see. I think the other one is just going to go apeshit. Uh, and uh, attack at Medric. Because he's right in front of him. First with a, leaning in for a, a deadly bite. That may actually be... Oh, it may actually hit. Yep. Uh, let's say 25 to hit. Because it's angry. Uh, then trying to pummel left fist. 16 to hit. I don't think that hits. 16 misses. Uh, and then with the right cross. 20 to hit. Yep. Six bludgeoning damage. And again, so it's... it's, it's uh, 12 it's plus 6? Yes. So 18 total. Uh, as it is uh, uh, now furiously, and you can see it foaming at the mouth, um, intent on you. The other one probably shouldn't have done, but it did, but it did. Uh, Silas. Okay. Well, Silas is going to come over here and look for the one that went this way. Okay, you do not see it. Is it in the building, or is it on the roof of the building? It's not on the roof of the building. Okay. Well, that's... He's going to look for a way down. If there's something like a drain pipe, he will try it. Um, roll He'll try a, anything once. Roll me a d20. Just a flat-up d20. Less than uh, that gets five. you a drain pipe. There you go. There's a drain pipe. It looks sketchy, but it's there. <laughs> Please make a climbing roll. Acrobatics yep. or athletics. Uh, it let's... is at disadvantage because this is a crappy giant drain pipe. It's fine. His best is his plus one acrobatics. Oh, there you go. <laughs> wow. As you manage to not pull this drain pipe off the side, although you do hear it uh, clink and clank a couple of times, it's definitely loose. No one else should try this because it's definitely going to fall off for the next person. Nobody sees him basically ping pong goating his way down the side of it until he lands on his feet going uh, unstably going I don't believe that worked um, actually, <laughs> and now I'm just still stuck on the building <laughs> and, and let's see here uh, hmm No, oh, someone down the, down the street uh, uh, kind of po poking out from one of the doorways gives a little golf clap <laughs> Silas uh, bows and is does he hear anything going on in the building? Like, is there screams or something? 
Um, you can make a perception check. That was 30 feet of your movement, by the way. Yep. Uh, perception. 19. 19. Uh, you do hear, um, actually, from this angle, you can kind of glimpse... No, actually, you couldn't see if the wind is before, so you couldn't now. Um, as you were climbing down, you were able to kind of look over, and you can see that there. They can see the thing inside the building knocking over things. It looks like it's it's tearing apart this space, looking for something. Okay. Inside the the uh, second floor. Does he see a doorway down here? Yep. There's doorways okay, on, the, this on the bottom doorway? floor. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Then he's got five, ten. Oh, sorry. Wait. No, that was his thirty. Uh, yeah, he's gonna use his, his action to dash, so, to 15, 20, and then 10 feet of trying to find the stairs and go up. So you, uh, go into what looks like, uh, someone's home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you see there's an upper, there's a set of stairs right there leading to the upper apartment. Okay. Oh, and before he, uh goes in the door he's going to yell back to buy holder uh does it have to stay within a certain range of you i don't think so he's got it for like an hour okay uh nope which one is that by nope, the way nothing uh summon aberration it's a fourth level summoning okay cool i gotta check that um later. he's going to yell uh out to it Go through the portal and kill anything. Hold, uh, kill anything attacking our Earth elemental. Now, I will say it's probably not going to happen in time because the Beholder is really slow at moving. But uh, that's the command he gives, anyways. And then at the end of the turn, the Beholder will go down. Uh, Basically just down 30 feet, so he's now only 60 feet above the ground. Uh, can it see anything through the portal? Or is the portal like a, an it's, opaque? It's still opaque. Okay. Well, that's all it can do for its orders, so that's... Okay. Uh, Annie, you're up. Okay. So I will... Um, take another shot at one of these two. Which one looks the worst? Uh, now that I've adjusted properly, I believe it is the one on the left. Yes, it's on its death door. The one you've hit a couple of times and the one that Medric has hit pretty heavily. I'm going to leave that one for the spiritual weapon then. Um, I'm going okay. to attack the one that does not look as bad. Um, has it reckless? Which one? Uh, yes, it did. That one did. Did they both reckless? Uh, sorry, no, it did not reckless. It did a, an attack that uh, did a psychic attack that failed. So, uh, it's not okay. Advantage. So the, the first 24. one was the higher. Yeah, still twenty two anyway. anyway. Um, so fifteen damage. Fifteen. Okay, it's still going. That hits it in one of its meaty shoulders. Doesn't seem to slow um, it down much. And now I'm quickly going to scan over this area. Is there any, like, door or anything that I see? Uh, yep, there's a trap door. Okay. There Where were a couple of chairs up there, so somebody had to get up there some way other than crawling down the side of the building. That, that, that's why I was looking for, <laughs> for a door somewhere. Um, whereabouts is it? Uh, basically right in the middle there. Like right here? Yep. Perfect. Just, you know, clocking how to get the hell down from here. Yep. All right. Uh, is that your turn? They're too far for me to give advantage, so yep. Okay. Uh, this guy, this guy, this guy has been searching all this time. Finds what he was looking for. Wah! Wah! Um, and actually, actually, uh, Silas, you hear this sort of screech cry that you can kind of interpret as relief slash joy. 
Yeah, just as I'm coming up the stairs. Pretty much. Um, and then it uh, flies through and smashes out a window on its way back to there, having retrieved what it was looking for. Uh, and that's its entire turn. Man in white. Casting, casting, casting. Now time to make the tricky roll. But he's really good at this stuff. And I apologize, these rolls aren't showing up on roll 20. I'll see if I can fix that here. Well, I don't know why Beyond 20 just occasionally decides some pages aren't worthy of it. <laughs> so it is at disadvantage. So twice... Oop, that's not great. That is better, but he has to take the lesser of the two. Uh, and he is still building energy. You can see now that large uh, wisps of silver are grabbing onto the edge. And they're actually kind of wrapping around with a sort of... Um, where the edge was sort of like a tear that was slightly in motion. Now it's sort of embracing those, those tears, almost creating a solid ring around it. But it, it is not able... He kind of tests a little bit. It tugs, but it does not close. If that is what he's aiming to do. Melora. And I will give you her sheet at some point. I just have to make it first. Uh, okay. Stab and stab, because she's been doing good at that. Nope. And... Nope. So unfortunately, she's not making any further progress. But she's really angry about it. Medric. So the one that was the one on the left is the one that was recklessly attacking, right? That's right. Hammer. That is a hit. And I'm anticipating Boom. Six damage. As that takes it down and it kind of crumbles at your feet. It's unlike weapon. Unlike <laughs> Some of the things you fought, and you fought other well, other worldly beings before, unlike them, the corpses are remaining. They are remaining. They are remaining. Okay. What that means, you're not sure, but hey. Uh, that was you. So the spiritual weapon, I'm assuming, is going to take after the other one. Yep. Sliced. Uh, that oh, is a me. crit. There you go. However, it's not quite done yet. Fifteen. Jeez. Okay. Well, it's still not quite done, but it made a good attempt at it. That's for darn sure. All right. Uh, that one is down. That one is down. Is there anything more on your turn? Nope. Uh, actually, do I see the other flying jerk? Uh, make a perception check at disadvantage. The portal is kind of between you and it, but you might be able to pick out the motion. Nope. Nope. Wow. Uh, nope, you're not even able to see the motion. There's just that swirling pearl and uh, portal, and because of all the silver energy that's been given off by the strange old man, um, it's kind of further obscuring the area from your view. All right. What is dude going to do? Does Melora see it? Uh, I can have her roll, but she's even further distance. Yeah, I suppose it. she's a little, a little busy uh, right now. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. No, she spots it easily, weirdly enough. Uh, oh, I didn't need to roll twice, but the first one, either way. Um, yeah, so she kind of hisses through her teeth. There's another one! Those flying bastards. Uh, with a lot of anger. You might, might say built-up anger. Uh, and with that, hmm. all right, uh, the one in front of Melora is not putting up with her crap anymore, uh, beats its fist upon the ground and is attempting to grab her. Oh, hell no. Uh, let's see. That would be this with advantage versus this. Just regular. It grabs her. And begins to move towards the portal. As it takes a step on the edge of the portal, dragging her with it, 
Uh, you do have an attack of opportunity, Medric. Uh, you're muted. All right, so I have to make sure uh, this is... How bad does it look? It's looking pretty bad. Not as bad as the other one was. Because whatever I do, I don't want to miss. If you have inspiration, I know don't give it out very often. I should probably do some more often. I'll try to work on that somehow. Would be a good time to use it. Yeah, I don't. Okay, but... uh. Medrick is just going to scream, no, and cast Burning Hands at level four and try to angle it so it hits both the Balgara and the Flying Church behind him. Uh, Burning Hands. It's a cone attack, so I can, I can avoid them. No, but it's it's not really a reaction. It's a Because you're just using attack of opportunity, yeah. right? Yeah, you, so you only... need a specific feat to be able to I'm pretty to sure use... I have it. Yeah, Warcaster, Warcaster. I have it. Yeah, oh. is it yeah, a level it's... one spell? Yeah. Hmm? Warcaster is limited. Yeah, let me check. I think, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good time to check out. Okay, I think it's a, a one action that has to be. Let's see. Warcaster. When a hostile creature uh, movement provokes an uh, opportunity attack from you, you can use your reaction to cast a spell at yeah. the creature rather than making an opportunity attack. The spell must have a casting time of one action and must target only that creature. Okay. Yeah, so the cone attack wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, oh, it is any spell. Okay. For yeah. some reason, I was thinking it was it was cantrip. That's good. Nope. Do I have anything else? I don't want to cast a fireball because that would be like a bad time. It can't <laughs> target just it too. Yeah, okay. it's got to be a single target spell. Do you have an attack cantrip? I have Scorching Ray, but my, my save is not that great. <laughs> or does it save for half damage, or does it... Well, I mean, like, Scorching Ray is a level one spell. Do you have an attack cantrip? Yeah, because some yeah. of those scales... Like, uh, Firebolt or something? Yeah, there's Sacred Flame. Uh, Sacred yeah, Flame... Yeah, that would be a... Doesn't that would target. be a dex save. It doesn't target a, a thing, does it? Yeah, it targets a creature, but the creature gets a save instead of an attack roll. It's one that I used in your game. Okay. But if a save's not very high, then... Okay, so if I cast Scorching Ray at level 4, then there's like 5 rays doing 2d6 fire damage each. That'll uh, go but towards does, it. But does it say it can it can target one opponent or is it targeting multiple opponents? You create three rays of fire and hurl them at targets within range. So I have to select a target. Yeah. Uh, I'll just select the same target five times. <laughs> yeah, it must target only that creature. So it's not that it has it can only target it, one creature. It has to all target that one creature. Okay. Yeah. So, so what is the is that an attack roll or is that a I believe save. it's an attack roll. Okay. It it doesn't mention anything about a save. So. That is a uh, scorching ray, said right? Yep. Okay. At level 4, so plus 7 spell attack. So the first one's a 22. 22 hits. Can I just roll, roll them all first and then do the damage? Yeah, because you're, you're going to be attacking the one thing anyway. It's all it's oh, all yeah. in. Second one hits. Okay. Three Third misses. one misses. That's a hit. Third one, fourth one hits. And the fifth, fifth one, one misses. So okay, three hits. So. This is going to be interesting. Because as you, hit, th as you hit, as you notice each ray hitting, you notice that it doesn't seem to be as concerned about fire as you would hope. Lovely. It's 2d6 without modifiers, okay. Yep, so 6d6 damage total. Uh, roll each one separate because of the resistance. One. Uh, Second so wait, one. So a total of five first, so that down to two. 
Second one is nine down to four. Oops. Third one is five down to two. Is that the is that the end of them? Yep. Okay. Uh, the scorching rays strike, burning across the the creature's flesh. And you can even smell the incineration of a little bit of hair, but again, not quite as affected by fire. Perhaps it lives in the fires of, of hell. Who knows? Wounded as it is, it still manages to drag Melora through the portal. Damn it. That, that was supposed to be like a dramatic success moment, and it was it just... It was like really, really close. Uh, the damage rolls were a couple of little, little lower than, than you, uh, you would hope. Oh uh, yeah, those aren't those aren't plus anything, are they? No, nope. not that I know of. Okay, it doesn't say in the book anyway. Um, so, unfortunately, the two of them vanished through the portal. Well, I guess we're going in the portal next episode. And that is their turn because they are now no longer there. Silas. Okay. Um, where where's the window that it jumped out of? Uh, right on this side. It actually looks like it broke in through that window and kind of came out through the same window. Okay, so I don't I can't see where. Uh... Oh, weird! You're not seeing the the the, the ping that I'm putting on there. Uh, let's see. If, do you see it? If I do this, no. Oh, I think you're stuck in distance measuring. Uh, that's the different one, yeah. So that's the ping there. I don't know why. Okay. I'll, sorry, I was on the wrong wrong layer because I moved things to the GM layer. So you should see it there now. Yeah. Okay. Well, unfortunately, he needs to cut some corners. So Silas is going to do something stupidly heroic. Uh-oh. Uh, he's going to charge up the staff. Okay. And then he's going to go running at this corner and out this window to the ground. Okay. Give me an acrobatics roll then, please. 15. All right. I'll say that's enough for half damage. Okay. Uh, as it is still 20 feet to the ground. Uh... Well, it was second floor. Right, that would so be it's like only ten, 10 feet, feet up. Down, so yeah. But there might uh, you could add a die for the glass damage or something, because he's going uh, through a window. Yeah, I'm not gonna be that petty. So it's two points of, of uh, bludgeoning damage as you can land heavily on the ground. Okie dokie. Let's see, minus two. Uh, okay, so that was one, two, three, four, five. And you can see it six. flying overhead. Let's. The bonus action, throw a magic rock at it. Okay. Those are bonus actions? Man. No, no, shit. No, that'd be my... No, sorry, action. I used my bonus action to charge the staff. Okay. So it'd just be a regular action, because he moved and he bonused, so now he's got his action. Oh, or it could... Uh, just a second. He's 20 feet up? Yeah, approximately. Hey, I just need to check the range on uh, his poison blast. I don't think he has long enough with that, though. Come on. My God, so many spells that start with M. <laughs> Polymorph, poison spray. No, 10 feet. Okay, he throws a magic rock at it. All right. Uh, oh, and... Uh, the one he had the hex on died. Yes. Shoot, no, I need a bonus action to switch. Oh, well, I've already used that. So it's just the rock. Okay. Uh, 16, 16. is a hit. And five bludgeoning. Uh, and so it is actually the, the, the throwing the magic stone this time. Yep. Uh, okay. Five magical bludgeoning and that's it. Uh, it does hit, kind of pitching it forward a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be slowed in its momentum. Do I see what it's holding? Uh, make a perception check. Nice. 17. 
Okay. Uh, yes, you see that it's holding what looks to be a large book. Uh, especially because it's a small creature. So mm. it's it's probably it's still an over oversized book for you, but it's even bigger for it. Okie dokie. Uh, uh, and my eye beast is somewhere in their world attempting to kill some of them. Uh, what's its movement? Oh, sorry. No, it hasn't gone yet. Uh, no, it moves down to 30 feet then. It still can't even move forward yet. It's too high off the ground. Okay. So it's hovering and trying to get in closer. Nee, 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 oh, nee, actually, nee. I'll just scream, kill this thing. <laughs> uh, doesn't take a if bonus he... to, to instruct? Nope. Cool. Uh, uh, if it, it can't see can't it, see it from there, then it'll hold its action. Okay. To uh, do its uh, double blast once it can see it. Okay. Uh, is that that's it? my turn done. All right. Annie. You saw one of these big creatures grab a hold of Melora and drag it through, just as it had done with Graveler earlier. What is the height of this building? This one's about, it's three stories, so you're about 30 feet up. A little more than 30 okay. feet. Okay, so th this one is as well? The one beside it? Uh, most of the rest of them are two stories. Okay. So am I, I able to coming. see the, that thing? Uh, no, because it's flying below the edge of the building. So it's kind okay. of flying in that alleyway. It's just below the edge of the building. And is there something, like any like pole or chimney or anything um, on the roof here that seems sturdy and stable, like attached to the building? You did hear a loud screeching noise when Silas went off the back of the building. Roll me a d20. Lower than 10 means there's one. Lower than five means it's crappy. Or five or lower means it's crappy. I I'm looking for something to tie a rope on. On the on the roof, not not some like a drain pipe or anything. Okay, uh, then it's the same roll. It's a luck roll, so that I don't have to think about it. Um, you're looking for ten or lower. Yep. A. Hey. It'll probably hold for now. It doesn't look like it's a stronghold, but um, let's call it um, let's call it a a uh, chimney. Small round chimney that's there that you can loop a rope around. Okay. Uh, I will do that. Okay. Let me tie that around. Um, I'll do that as my action. And uh, as I'll use the rest of my movement and my bonus dash to climb down the side of the building. Easily done. You are now on the ground. Put you right there, side or front doesn't matter, but it's up to you. I'm I'm content there. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Uh, that was everything that I could do, I believe. Uh, that would be bad. Where where would the the chimney be? Like how much movement? Because it's a 30 foot tall building, so I would have used 30 to get down. Yeah, we'll just say it's right on the edge between the two here, so it's not far from you. Okay, so one, two, three. I'm going to go here. Uh, okay. And that's all. The Flying Fiend is going to make a dash for the, the portal, but uh, by holder, it's ready mm -hmm. and waiting. Zappy zappy. Pretty much. First one is a 25. That's nice. definitely a hit. For... These are psychic damage, right? Yep. For okay. 12 damage. Oh, right. It's uh, it's not the number there. Uh, okay. Oof. Okay. And then a 20 to hit. That's definitely a hit. And I think uh... the, the bonus is enough to kill it. So it's plus 7 bonus. So it crashes. Uh, that's, to probably, the that's probably supposed to be the 5, so that'd be another 12. Um,. I accidentally rolled damage twice. Oh, okay. Uh, it would be the lesser. The, the bonus is enough to kill it. Yeah. Because <laughs> it only had five hit points left at the point in which you said, I hit it again. Uh, yes, so it crumples kind of like, actually, I think t two of these have died this way. 
uh, maybe all, all, maybe three of them actually have died, kind of crumpling, screaming, and crashing into the ground. Actually, all four. All four? There you go. It's killed all four of them. So if that kills all four of them, I definitely have to beef up the, the enemies from now on. Because that's just an ad. That's not even you guys. That's amazing. Well, I don't know, like two turns to get up, like two thirds of my eight points, so maybe not. <laughs> um, yeah, but you're still standing where all of them are dead. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm fine with that. That is its attempt to get there. It does not. The man in white lets out a, uh, a yell of satisfaction. There's a surge in the magical energy. Uh, and the portal is closed, collapsing in on itself and vanishing with a small pop. Ha ha! No! How do we get our friends back? And you can see that he's less concerned with that at the moment, uh, having celebrated his success. So, uh, <coughs> that goes to the hidden layer and vanishes from sight. Uh, that going did not up there. From sight. Why did it not vanish from sight? Right. Uh, there we go. As the portal vanishes. And he, with satisfaction, closes his book, then looks at the rooftop he's in and tries to figure out how he's going to get down. That is all the like enemies gone. Angrily make my way up to where he is. He's on the second floor, so uh, there's no obvious way to climb up there. And I'm he's just going to enter the middle. And he's looking down, kind of looking for an obvious way to get down and not finding one. Oh dear, this is not what I do. Up the stairs. So, uh... I'll say Am I that, breaking into people's houses now? Uh, well, this <laughs> this happens to be a business that's facing inward towards the uh, towards the area there. Um, I won't belabor the point. You managed to get up there long before he can figure his way down. Uh, maybe he doesn't have that particular spell. But he looks quite satisfied. Aha! I figured it out. <sighs> Hopefully it'll be a little faster mm -hmm. next time. But thank you for your assistance. Right, uh, my, my friend was carried in there. How do we get her out? Oh, terrible shame about that. No idea. That would require a lot more research. Yes, and you'll do that research, right? Our friends will assist you if you do that research. Oh, I don't think that you have the necessary skills to assist, but I do appreciate your, your enthusiasm. It's not my intuple. But my friend is, has gotten sent to some hellish dimension, and I can't just let her die there. Hmm. That is problematic. What, what, what plane was that, or what dimension was that? Not entirely sure. One of the hells, I believe. Wasn't Great. able to really narrow it down very well. Had to focus mostly on collapsing its state. It was unstable and probably would have collapsed on its own given time, but who knows how many more creatures would have crawled through. It would have been much, much worse. If I hadn't been interrupted, I could have closed it a bit earlier, but no matter there. People misunderstand things all the time. I'm just like, Melora's in hell. How do we ever laugh? Are, are, are Annie and uh, Silas coming up too, or? No. I'm trying to deal with stuff down here, figure out what's going on, calm people yeah. down. People are kind of what? coming into the street and, and poking and prodding the remaining corpses of these things. Um, again, they are staying around. They are fully physical, which you know that when you faced off against some demonic entities before, they dissolved. Uh, they, are also, uh, they also stink a lot. Silas, oh, is, Silas is going to have uh, eyeballs uh, uh, by by beast there uh, go over and help uh, Medric uh, scare that guy or persuade him. While Silas himself is going to check out what they were trying to steal. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over here to get the piece of wood that. The, the guy had. Okay. Uh, the piece of wood um, is remarkably familiar to you. Uh, it's a little scraped up now, especially after having been dropped from a height and handled by whatever claw-like uh, things they have. But it's actually the nameplate, the hanging sign that normally sits out front of the three bells. 
It was a custom job they had made. It's a beautifully made artifact. Now, like I said, scraped up a little bit. Paint is a little scraped, but that's what that is. Um, the book, when you take a closer look at it, uh, appears to be a, uh, a shipping ledger uh, tracking numerous shipments back and forth. Uh, it is for um, a ship. Oh, I don't have the name of the ship here. It is for a ship that uh, uh, you would have seen in dock before. It is not currently in dock. This might be the home office, essentially. Uh, uh, probably what it is is this is the accounting office for a number of ships that come in. But I was searching around for this particular log. It seems relatively mundane at first glance. Hmm. Um, Silas is going to cast Detect Magic. Why the heck not? Okay. Um, it does not register as magic. In fact, neither does the sign. Neither do these bodies, for that matter. There's a faint whiff of magic on the ground underneath where the portal was. Probably no. the portal intersected with it for a little bit, little bit leaving some residue. It is uh, of... Get the kind of magic specifically, but it'd be the same thing as the Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, Silas will relay that to Annie that none of these things are magical. It's like it grabbed a one grabbed a sign, one grabbed a book, and one grabbed a kid, and one didn't grab anything, I think. the heck were they here for um meanwhile on the roof um i really do Ooh. have some studying to do it's most important if i'm ever going to help you get catherine back i'd i'd best get started oh you know about catherine oh yes look i realize you need to study but we there is some information we probably have to share and my friends would like to talk to you uh who are you by the way i really shouldn't tell you there are rules to these things but I suppose yeah 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 well, we we've met uh wow player we've met professor bitterhorn professor bitterhorn oh. yes he, he was in here earlier uh, a few weeks ago with the circus or the, the party whatever actually dudek is still here he'll be leaving with the circus probably closing right. up his uh, yeah. his uh, his display of unique things um and then his if dudek can trust us i'm sure you can too oh yes quite a curious fellow not exactly on the inside, I might say, but you probably shouldn't mention that to him. He'd probably take it as an offense. I mean, I only know from observation, so I can't really say if that would be the case or not, but uh, one can presume. I'm just going to switch back to the main screen, so there might be a slight hiccup in the sound here. So, I mean, I really should be going. Where, where, where can we find you again? Oh, God, I hope not. You shouldn't really have seen me so far. That also is a curiosity. Most don't notice me, and that's by design. The fact that you do is rather disturbing. I would love to ask you more about where you've been, but I have my own suspicions, and I can test those at a later date. Please just give us a name or where we can find you. Uh, we may need your help to retrieve Melora. Well, no, I mean, maybe. Uh, I really can't give you a location. That requires much more explanation than I'm prepared to give. Let us just say that I'm around, slightly beside, and here and then. That might be as best as I can do. And what do we call you? Hmm, names. Oh, they are such dangerous things. I suppose... Hmm. Well, if you promise not to ask anybody... When he's waiting for you to give that promise. Yes, I promise. Are you sincere? Not to ask... Well, Silas and Annie, the two of my, my two companions, they have a right to know, but... Uh, would that oh, be yes. okay? Well, they're already aware of me. Rather curious again. Keep running into the same people who know things. 
It may mean I'm able to disclose to you a lot more than I had anticipated, but I will have to think about this for a while. That's okay. Just a name for now is good. Right. A name. What name should I give you? You have to understand that the name I'm going to tell you is not properly my name. That would be dangerous um, for reasons that I also can't explain. But let us just say that should others know too much, it would put in jeopardy much of the work that I've been trying to do, um, which would also put much of the world in jeopardy, I think. I mean, I don't want to brag. I'm, I'm not trying to buff up my own reputation. That's not uh, what I mean. As as uh, Medrick is getting frustrated talking to this guy, uh, Silas is watching, and he's going to hex uh, the guy. Oh, damn it. I'm, I'm actually getting somewhere. <laughs> uh, That's fine. He's just going to hex him. This guy can teleport. Silas needs to know he can follow him if necessary. Uh, does... There's okay. no save. Is that the hex the same as the hex that's there? <laughs> Sorry? Or is that a different hex than the hex spell, by, the, by any chance? No, oh, it's the hex spell. Okay. Actually, he'd be technically just using a bonus action to move it to him, since he already had it on one of the... Okay. I'm just trying one to of the flying things. if they are aware of it. I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, they'd be no. aware of it if, if you if you were attacking and doing extra necrotic damage for no apparent reason. So. Yeah, um, like there's but... no save or anything, and it's okay. not a super uh, obvious spell. Um... I mean, he might feel something if he's a caster. Okay. Uh, nope, that's not in there. Don't think there's anything again. I just want to make sure that it's it's appropriate for him. Okay. Uh, yeah, the spell the spell lands. Um, no worries there. Um, it I'll interrupt. It's not Dude. like um, it's not like uh, the hunter's mark though. You don't know where they are. Unless it's a uh, well thing with his uh, curse mastery thing from Mother Hydra. Right. Uh, he can get a feeling of what direction to them. Right. Okay. I was. That's why I was trying to remember if there was a thing for yeah. that. Okay. That. Yeah. That's why he can move it an extra time as a bonus action and gotcha. such. But... Gotcha. Okay. Yep. I wanted. But to he only cast it at level one, so it's only going to stick around for an hour. Okay. All right. Um, so yes, it. You get the impression that he's not deliberately trying to make you angry. So much as he's so concerned with his own thoughts, he's not really yeah. paying much attention and kind of getting lost in his own thoughts. But also very guarded. You know, he, he kind of speaks yeah. and then stops himself and then, well, I can't really talk about that sort of numerous times. I'll, I'll cut him off at one point and say, yeah, yeah. We, we understand the need for secrecy. You have Professor Bedorn has explained all of that. Well, I'm We are to... trying to help you save the world. Yes, well, I, with all due respect, uh, Bitterhorn knows a few things. But he's really not in the full big picture, if you know what I mean. In fact, I would think that you are probably more closer to the bigger picture than he is. Hmm. But that also sort of depends. He could still be a valuable ally. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's quite resourceful and quite useful. Has a good stock of, stock of knowledge. Um, granted, yes, well, I suppose I can't talk about that either. All you need to talk about is a name. Right, name. So I can contact names. you if we need to. So you can contact me. Ah, yes, 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 right. You have some of that magic available to you. That's very good. That's very good. Yes, yes. Hmm. And he seems lost in his thoughts again, as if sort of plotting out something and has forgotten <coughs> that you were there. Uh, make a persuasion check. Okay, persuasion... Oh, that's only a plus one. And that's a four. Hmm. Yes, well, nice talking to you. Sorry about your friend, but I'm sure it'll work out. It, it won't, without any help. Hey, hey, what was your name again? And he kind of, he's walking away, and he kind of turns back. Oh, yes, sorry. I do forget Also, the way down sometimes. is this way. Yes, I thought about that, and it seems far too dangerous. So I'm just going to take this other way instead. 
Um, and uh, he steps one foot off of the edge of the building. Oh, and half turns. And as he sort of uh, turns, that foot goes through midair, and he starts to fall backward over the edge of the building. Uh, you can call me Tassar. And he vanishes. See you next time. Not in a teleportation way. There was no spell that was cast. It's as though his entire body was just sort of yanked into an invisible thre thread and pulled out of existence for a while. Can Silas still sense him? Uh, is there a range on that? That's the interesting question. I don't think so. Just, if he's on the other side of the planet, he'd just get a direction and way, way far away. What I'll say is, you get the impression that you can sense him, but you don't get a direction. Okay. You can make an arcana check if you like. Eighteen. Two possibilities present yourself, and they aren't mutually exclusive either. One, he's left this plane of existence. You wouldn't because there is no direction to another plane of existence from here. Or two, he's entered a protected space, which is somehow protected against being sensed or seen. Not mutually exclusive, but you can't really determine which one might be true. Yep. As tell them, he's gone somewhere. I can't tell where. There's a crowd building up around those lar those small spined creatures, and a few of the more braver souls are actually ripping off some of the large spines, um, kind of as a way of, of getting their, their own in for being scared. But a few of them do take the spines and kind of heft them as if they might make a, make a weapon out of them. Silas gonna... tells them to beware. We don't know if those spines are poisonous or something. Coming up from the waterfront, um, you see uh, Verendel on his horse. Uh, he looks a little worse for wear. wear. Uh, he may have actually been fighting with that thing, and he actually has one of those spines kind of coming out of the back of his shoulder uh, where it must have attacked him. Okay, uh, they're probably not poisonous. Um, and he kind of rides up and... and Somewhat dismisses the crowd. Uh, they kind of part a little bit as his horse comes through. He's also a recognized figure of authority here. Um, and gets down off of his horse. Ah, sorry I wasn't able to take it down, but uh, it... Um, Silas, could you... And he points to the, the spine in his back. Could you pull that out? I can't reach it. Oh, you're muted. But, yeah, you may want someone who's stronger than me, like Annie... Where is she? Is she all right? I'm literally, like, right behind him. <laughs> ah. Good. You you look all right. They no took one... Melora through the portal. They, they what? Oh, no. Um, Melora's in one of the planes of hell, apparently, according to this white, arrogant, robed dude up, that was up there. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm, I'm sorry. Do you... I want to talk more about this, but uh, can you... Uh, th Not... This kind of... Yeah. This itches a, yeah. a lot. So I'll... Gently, or... Do I need to make a medicine check, or...? Um, you, you, you can either just yank it out, which it probably is going to hurt a little bit more, or you can make a medicine check to try to do it without hurting. They are medicine barbed check. at the very end. Oh, that's so good. Medicine, plus five... Yeah, plus five is pretty good. Yeah. You're able to kind of slowly pull it out. He, he's, he's not complaining as much as perhaps the wound looks like. Um, there is a bit of blood, and it did sink in fairly deeply. He got That was the critical hit that was off screen. I rolled that one earlier, Ooh. and I shouldn't have rolled anything earlier, apparently, because all my good rolls went there. Um, <laughs> uh, but he is How bad great. does he look? Uh, he doesn't... He, he looks rough. But as soon as that's out, you see him pause for, for a moment and concentrate, and you can see the wound closing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Silas is going to see if he can take a blood sample from one of the smashed-up Bulgar Bulgaras. 
Oh, there's plenty of blood. Uh, you might have to scrape some of it off the ground, but there's plenty of it. Well, he's going to try and get to a wound and maybe squeeze it some to get some blood fresh out of the body. Okay. So there is a, Dr. Marigold to there investigate is a, this. A bunch of, of looks <laughs> uh, as you uh, as you begin to to poke around at the corpse. Um, do you explain yourself or otherwise try to hide it, or you just just do it? He said uh, he's just going to tell them that uh, we need to find out where they came from, and that's all the explanation he'll give. Uh, he'll take like two vials worth, but uh, easily done. Um, and you get kind of nods of, of that sort of knowing nod when people who don't know things are kind of like, right, right, you, you, need, you need to do that. That's, that's important. Mm -hmm. That's important. A um, little weird, but that's important. Um, we need to get some of these to Dr. Marigold. You might know more. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to want to take a look at these. I'm I'm really sorry, my friend. And he puts his hand on your shoulder. I'm really sorry. I We'll get her back. Do we have any idea what they were doing here? They took a few objects. They uh, took a they took the sign for the three bells, a ledger from a ship that's not even at port, and tried to take a kid. Right, where this where's the child's family? Still over by the fountain. Um okay. There's a bit of a gathering there as the, the child is... The child is doing much better. Um, they don't have a lot of hit points to start with. Thankfully, <laughs> it didn't die outright. That was kind of worrying yeah. me for a moment there. Uh, but children are much more resilient. Um, but it uh, it's kind of getting that moment of celebrity because everybody's like, oh, oh, you were healed by by the... Uh, uh, by the... Uh, oh, wow, I'm forgetting the, the, the title. Phoenix Champion. Phoenix Champion. <laughs> Uh, no, actually, they're not using the Phoenix Champion uh, title. They're using the um, uh, the Temple title. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, the... Flame Keeper. The temporary Flame Keeper. You, you, <laughs> you were healed by the Flame Keeper. It's not, not temporary. They're literally uh, uh, using that. Uh, and the child has got this, this moment of, you know, there was definitely terror, and you can see the remains of the streaks of... of, of uh, of uh, tears down its cheeks, but there's also that everybody's paying attention to me. <laughs> everybody's paying attention to me. I gotta uh, do this more of, often. Uh, and... I'll I'll be joining Medric to see the, the the child. Okay. Um, the child may be playing it up a little bit, but they, they they were definitely shaken by by what they had seen and all that. So they're they're sticking close to their their uh, their parents at the moment, and you actually recognize one of the two parents. Um, you recognize it as Celia Ohms, which is Nichetto Ohms' daughter. She was the one who was dressed up, I believe, as the wooden goose uh, at the yeah. party. And this apparently is her daughter. Um, and upon seeing the flamekeeper coming closer, um, she catches your eye and uh, kind of presents the child. Now, say, say, uh, thank you to the nice man. Thank you. Glad to help. Are you Very okay? Scary. Can you do the flame thing again? Apparently, there's. I'm afraid not right now. But if you get hurt again, come to the temple, and then the flame thing can happen. And she kind of reaches. Uh, she ju jumps forward. Surprise attack. <clears throat> uh, for a hug. And Aww. then you kind of hear hear her kind of half muffled into your your clothing. Uh, you're very warm. Yeah, it's the power of Ignis. Cool. And she kind of steps back and she just has these w bright eyes looking. Uh, maybe a little young, but also a potential acolyte. You know, made, definitely made an impression <laughs> on this on this young girl. Um, come, Bethany. Uh, Celia says, it's time to go home. Okay. And she kind Wait, of waves. Uh, Celia. Is yeah. there... Oh, sorry. The flying creatures, they, they were looking for specific things. Is were there they? anything? Uh, yeah. So I'm not sure why they would go after your daughter. Well, she's special. She's my daughter. Well, yes, obviously. But... Don't have any Does idea she have anything, why. any specific birthmarks or anything? Or born on a certain noticed. date? And she gives you her birth date. I don't have the, the date offhand. Okay. 
Uh, the child is six. Um, which would have made her a little, a little, uh, sort of physically, almost a little much for the, the flying creature to, wrong, wrong window, uh, for the flying creature to have lifted. She's right yeah. on that edge. Um, the birthday doesn't mean anything to you right now, but it might if you do more research or if there's something else to connect it to it. What was Ocelia's last name again? Ohms, O-M-S. O-M-S. Yeah. And for other references, uh, Nichetto Ohms is a well-known woodcarver. He also was okay. at the party. He was dressed as the wooden duck, I believe. Okay. Um, and uh, he's the one who uh, Dogal Marsh apprenticed under. Uh, Dogal Marsh is the one that uh, made the statue of the mother. Yep. And he's a, a very uh, impressive budding young artist. Just to give context to to that. You said in the chat, how do you spell that? Uh, N-I-C-E-T-T-O, Nichetto. Nichetto Ohms. Uh, the daughter, the, sorry, the little girl is named Bethany. Yeah, I got that uh, part. And Celia, C-E-L-I-A, is the, the child's mother. Cool beans. All right, well, if you notice anything weird or, or if you can think of anything, let me know. We're usually, she's at the Three Bells, I'm at the temple. And if we hear of anything else that may be happening, we'll let you know also. And, uh, if anything strange happens, come and, come and find one of us, okay? We will, says uh, Celia. And actually, Celia steps forward, uh, puts her hand on... on uh, on the flamekeeper's shoulder and looks him straight in the eyes. Thank you so much. I don't know how to thank you properly. I saw that your friend... If there's anything I can do, let me know. I will. And we'll get her back somehow. And I'm going to lean down to Bethany for, for a second mm -hmm. and tell her that you were, re you were really, really brave today and you did really, really good. I didn't scream or anything much. I'm glad you're okay. I'm Me glad too. I pat her on the, on the head. Uh, and she kind of squirms at the patting on the head, as six-year-olds are wont to do. Uh, <laughs> but um, she does kind of smile at you. And there are lingering eyes towards the Flame Keeper. Um, definitely an impression. But. Right, should we pack one of these beasts up and bring it to uh, Marigold? Maybe like a bra, uh, one of the bra, bra, bleh, 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 words, Bargura's arms, too? Who knows? You could use it for a new Dover. Uh, I said this once we were out of earshot of, of the owns. So. Yeah, <laughs> and, and there is still a crowd that's coming out to see what these creatures were now that the danger seems to be passed. Um, nobody's making any particular motions about what to do next. Um, uh, although, um, v uh, Verando gets back on his horse, um, uh, nods to Annie, and that's a kind of, a, I've got to go to work, uh, nod, uh, and he rides off, pro presumably to get people to deal with these bodies. Yeah. Uh, probably Marigold, you're not sure. Um, although Marigold, as you know, is without his uh, his strong servant. And I can help him carry these. Or at least load them into the cart, whatever. Um. Hmm. So, are you um. dismissing the crowd? Are you moving the bodies? What do you want to do with them? I figured we can just wait until Marigold gets here. I was kind of like, pile them up kind of all in one pile yeah. in one area instead of having them like spread the around. Way. Okay. Pull them away from the fountain. The smaller ones um, are really light. They're probably hollow boned as well. And they have these crazy spines that come out uh, of their tail. Um, you actually saw them use them once. They can whip them around and fire them at people. Um, they take a little bit of care to move around because they're, the spines get in the way, but they're relatively light. Um, the, 
larger ones do require a couple of people. They are dense. They are nearly eight feet tall, and that's with them hunching over a little bit to walk on all fours. Uh, two massive gorilla front arms. Uh, and I think both of them, with or two of them anyway, uh, oh, there's only two bodies here, that's right, because the others step through, uh, have these massive you know, holes in their chests where they were pummeled with arrows from afar and then beaten with the... Uh, the uh, uh, the weapon, um, so, but it's not hard to find volunteers. A lot of people are, are very curious, and it doesn't take long to to organize people to kind of put them in a pile. Uh, someone asks, "Should we burn it, Flamekeeper? Should we burn it?" No, not yet. A little. We need to figure out what they were first. Um, after a little while. I mean, th there's still a large number of onlookers. Um, they are quite disgusting. There are people who are kind of wondering, should, should, we, should we move them off the street or something? Um, and you do see coming along, uh, leading a horse and a cart. Uh, uh, actually, sorry, he would be on the cart because uh, uh, Marigold is not that, not that tall. Um, but leading his cart, uh, or leading his horse to the cart, Bringing his cart and horse. Why is that so hard to say? Uh, <laughs> kind of calling out in front of him, make way, make way, make way. Uh, and there's a reluctance kind of movement. Brings the cart up alongside. Whoa. Kind of peers over. Holy crap. Hi. <laughs> and kind of hops down. This looks um, interesting. And he kind of. He pulls out a, a little, a little uh, uh, a pen-sized stick that unfolds into about a two-foot-long pole, and he's kind of poking and prodding at the bodies. Oh, uh, that's definitely interesting. Do you know what they are? Mm, well, oh, my... where, they're, where they're from? Well, not from around here. At least I certainly hope they're not from around here. If these things are living here, then we're all in living in hell, <laughs> so to speak. I mean, not technically. Um, they are manifestations of um, hellish beings, native hellish beings. These are not transformed souls. At least I don't think so. I haven't studied that part nearly enough. I'm mostly a, a studier of the flesh, after all. And they are flesh, which is also rather unusual, uh, because they definitely yes, have they, a demonic source. They didn't disappear. There was a portal that opened up, and these came out, and oh, portals. they, they oh. took somebody back to their hell. Well, that's most unfortunate. Yeah, we need to get back there at some point. Oh, well, not too many people want to go into hell, but uh, knock yourself out. Um, in the meantime, I could use a hand. Uh, and he kind of deflates oh. a little bit when he says, I could use a hand, kind of thinking back probably to the hand that he um, once had. Uh. And yeah, he starts, I'll note. He starts, he gets the three of you, but also starts pointing at the crowd, and it takes a bit of work. Uh, the big red one uh, kind of resembles uh, an animation gorilla, but not quite. Um, you can notice here and here, and he does point out that uh, around the band, around the wrists, there's actually manufactured items. They, they, they look like uh, just sort of simple bands of metal, but it looks like adornment. Um... They're more intelligent than most people give them uh, credit for. Generally, though, more of um, an enforcer type. I'm not really sure what they were doing here. They're used for their muscle, after all. Well, they were looking for items. That makes well, no sense. These, these larger ones tend to work in groups, so I see there's two of them here. Uh, makes sense. There were four total. Oh, oh two dear. Of them got back. Where did the other ones go? I Oh, they went back? Oh, well. Oh. Back with our friends. Oh, right. Um, sorry about that again. Um, well, yeah, I'm not as good with my cosmology, but I might be able to help you a little bit. I'll need to study them and break them down a bit. Um, they are not very and, good conversationalists, I'm told. Mm -hmm. And just to check, um, when Silas did his detect magic, they, did the bands show as magical? They did not. They did not. Um, as you look a little bit closer, uh, why don't uh, all three of you make investigation rolls, actually, as he's well, kind of pointing <laughs> this out? What? Yep, there is, uh, a, there is, a, there is a thing there. Yeah. 
Silas is not actually helping them with the bodies. Oh, okay. Silas is writing in his book, communicating with our circus friend to tell him uh, that who uh, that we met someone from his group. Dudek? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, we weren't supposed to tell him that or to mention him, but it's like if we all saw him then. Sure. But, really. Silas wasn't any part of that. He doesn't yeah. know what you said. He doesn't even know the guy's name at this point. Yep. Um, but I just hope he doesn't. Th he doesn't think Med Medrick is the one who snitched. So with <laughs> with, uh, with Annie and Medrick, um, the only thing you note is that the bands do have different colors. Uh, the two of them do seem to have different colored bands, uh, and they are different colored between the two of them, between the left and right. Doesn't show of any significance to you. You just notice that. So it's like four bands of different colors. So. That's right. That's right. Okay. They're non-magical. They are sized for their enormous arms, so they would fit easily around your head. Um, so they are enormous. But what other significance, you're not sure. Um, you write in your book to Dudek uh, that we have met someone else of your group. Um, and there is... Um, Let's see what would be the response. Yeah, he would say basically he had a, one of the stone covered books and he was dressed entirely in white. Uh, Medrick right. talked with him, but I haven't had a chance to speak with him yet. Okay, I need to look something up. Uh, uh, hmm, okay. Yeah, I gotta look something up again, too. Ugh. Dudek. Where are you, Dudek? Uh, huh. I was pretty sure that I had... Oh, yeah. Well, didn't write it as Dudek, I wrote it as Professor Bitterhorn. Oh. Alright. Uh... Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Um, I'm afraid you'll have to be a little more specific about which organization they came from, but I'd be very curious at seeing this book. It's an, it's an intact one? Uh, it appeared to be. I don't have it. He disappeared shortly after talking with Medrick, so I imagine the book is with him. And you do remember would, that, that uh, Dudek has uh, about 12 different honorifics, different groups he's part of. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he just mentions the uh, the Dwarf Portal Book group. Most curious. Argen um, Argenti Sagax, that's it. Yeah. As far as I know, there are no others. Well, there's at least two of you now. It didn't seem like you wanted to talk much. Hmm. Uh, where are you? I'll come to you. Oh, I'm down by the three, uh, three uh, bells. Uh, when you get here, you'll probably smell the demon stink. Indeed. That's the only response. But you get an impression that he is on his way. Meanwhile, the, the corpses have been loaded on. Um, uh, Marigold comments a little bit on the smaller ones. Now, these I've seen before, not in the flesh, so to speak. The flesh does not normally survive. That itself is interesting. I must know more about this uh, way they came here. But um, they're normally messengers, sometimes scavengers, sometimes... Uh, annoyances, I suppose. Very low down, as far as I understand, for the, the pecking order. But again, my cosmology is a little bit thin. I don't deal with flesh, and these are not normally flesh here. So I relish the opportunity to take a look at these. Yeah. I can make something uh, of them. Did Silas say that he was contacting Professor Bitterhorn? No. No, yeah. he just uh, did it, but... Um, uh, he will walk over and say, I mean, maybe, I mean, it, 
It could be because they came through a portal instead of getting summoned by somebody. Um, Might still have to be a rather special portal, though, because um, their flesh... Oh, okay, the cosmology is still, again, as I said, it's outside of my expertise, but from what I understand, um, they can't exist here. It's not a matter of whether they... they um, uh, the, the, the material plane is abhorrent to their flesh and wants to destroy it, wants to break it down, wants to get rid of it. And the fact that it's still around is, um, well, potentially quite disturbing, I suppose you might say. It might mean that there's some permanent way that they can... Uh, come in, which would be appalling and terrible. I'm sure it's nothing like that. So could somebody from our plane exist in their plane? Oh, yes, yes. It is a terrible place, um, from what I understand. Uh, depending on where you are, some of them are more habitable than others. Others are, um, well, again, planar knowledge is beyond me, but uh, the basic cosmology exists that there are fundamental planes for each element, uh, each thought, most of the deities, uh, and then the hells and uh, the abyss and a number of terrible places. Um, if they are not in any of the terrible places, then they'll be able to find their way, I'm sure. If they're and uh, what, which one of the hells is, are, are these from? Well, they don't reside in a single one. Uh, they are, well, the smaller ones, common messengers used by many creatures, I think. Uh, the bigger ones, uh, uh, I, I can't say, but I think they're more specific. Uh, you'd have to speak to a planar expert about that, I think. And there aren't that we, many we, of them. We might know one, or know one, well, know of one. Good, good. I suggest you ask them uh, these much more sophisticated questions. Now, if you excuse me, I have some um, some work to do. Um. Let any... us know if you find anything. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, stop by any time. Uh, well, not any time. Um, probably not the middle of the night. Uh, I might be awake, but I don't think I should be disturbed. Um, and he kind of looks to the crowd. You, uh, you, and you. You're to ride with me. I'm going to need some help um, delivering my cargo. And all three of them, uh, fairly sturdy uh, men in the town, uh, turn to the three of you as in kind of looking for confirmation. Uh, they don't pay as much attention to Silas, mm. but Silas has, you know, magical beings and there is still a floating eyeball somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Annie is recognized as a member of the guard and uh, Medrick is recognized as the Phoenix champion. So they're looking to you as authority figures. Again, something that's a little bit different. I just nod. Yeah, it's, it's okay. He's good. And uh, Marigold doesn't seem to have been waiting for that. He just starts the wagon up and they kind of quickly hop on, trying to find a place around these massive bodies. There's a big stain on the ground, kind of very blackish. The blood that you collected is far more black and dense than, than uh, mortal blood. Um, it also smells of ichor. It has a very sort of uh, coal and, and bitter smell. But with the bodies removed, and with only the evidence of the, the stains upon the ground becoming what will be a, a, a strange moment, a strange attraction, maybe, if they don't clean them, if the rain doesn't wa don't wash them away, you find yourselves in the street. Nobody else having wandered away. Um, Silas will suggest that to some of the people that they get buckets of water and at least try to clean this patch up. We don't know what the blood will do to someone if they happen to touch it. With that dire warning, and with the somewhat odd appearance that Silas has, they turn to the Phoenix Champion. Um, excuse me, sir, could you uh, bless the ground or something? Maybe a holy fire? I, I don't really know much about these things, but um, is that something you can I mean, I can try a bucket. Uh, salt water gets rid of a lot of things, but uh, maybe you, you could do your... Um, he kind of waves his hand as if trying to mimic any kind of blessing or spell casting. I, I don't think... Is there... A, like, in, in player notes, is, 
there are spells like uh, like ceremony, or uh, there are some consecration spells. They tend to be a lot higher power than yeah. perhaps what's being called for here. Mm -hmm. Or you, or you could just sacred flame everything. Yeah, but I don't, want, I don't want to like set the city on fire. Hold on. It's radiant well, damage. It's, it's, it's not fire damage. damage. It's, it, it <laughs> appears to be yeah. fire, but it's actually holy damage. All right, I can do that. I'll sacred flame that spot. Okay. And perhaps because it's robbed of its vital essence, uh, the being no longer sustaining it, it does sizzle, sizzle, and, sizzle and crack at the touch of radiant energy, uh, and in fact does burn away. However, there is a sort of permanent stain there that no matter, no matter how many times you call upon the, the, uh, the ever flame, uh, it does not seem to wipe it away. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll try that bucket now. Yeah. See the guy, old an old fisherman, half of his teeth missing, and it trundles away. Heads into the three bells, comes back out with a bucket, some semi soapy water. Yeah. You, you feel you get the impression he might have just stolen the the cleaning bucket from the the corner of the room. <laughs> As he's off getting that, Silas will actually touch the the blood from the area and see if it has a tingle. Um. It's it's thick. It has no real essence of its own, but it does feel somewhat unnatural. But does it feel poisonous? No. Okay. It wipes his hand off in the dirt and he says, okay, it's probably not poisonous, but still, if they can clean up the spot, maybe that'll help. We don't want this place getting cursed or something. And the old guy comes back out with a bucket and with the scrub brush in hand. One which does look familiar, uh, like the same one they used to clean the floor in the Three Bells. And it's, I can get her good, sir. I can get her good. And proceeds to scrub heavily on the on the, uh, on the the stains. Good, good, good. Uh, are you going anywhere? Are you going to be heading into the Three Bells to chat? What's the plan? Uh, you do know, uh, Silas, that Dudek said he was coming to see you. Yeah. Uh, he, I, Silas will tell uh, Annie and uh, Medrick that uh, Dudek is going to drop by. Okay. Yeah. It would be nice for him to see the, 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 the corpses of the monsters. Yeah. yeah, I guess he's moving a little slow or something. Um, well, most likely Dudek is actually in his quarters. He may have actually been in one of in his in his building, which is halfway across across the world. But um, Annie, I th think this would be a good time for me to start looking at that stone covered book. We need to know how to get to her. I can look at it. Sorry, I couldn't make that out. I can look at it. Yes, but I'm the one with the arcane knowledge. Well, we could have Dudek look at it, and I'll look at it at the same time. I'll... I'll give it to you. To read in my room. It's not go it's not leaving that room. Fine. You've been acting on your own and I don't fully trust your actions at this time. I know. So that's the that's the compromise. Doesn't leave. Okay. Do you head into the three bells? No, yeah, might as well. We gotta wait for Dudek. Right, right. Thought, so. Medrick is just like being quiet and panicking. If, he's not, as if he Dudek thinks. doesn't arrive within half an hour, then we might as well head to the three bells because I don't know what Dudek's doing. I mean, the three bells is just at, just around the corner from here, right? Because you were in the three bells before. Mm hmm. Um, I mean, you you could just let him know, hey, we're going inside. And you yeah. are holding the three bells sign still. Was the the name of the 
boats from the uh, the uh, the book. Was that the one? Did that match any of the signs in the Baron's room? No. Okay. So just some boat. Okay. Uh, you get the feeling that all of those were taken as conquests for ships yeah. that he's taken. Uh, he would give that, uh, take that book back to the uh, the building. Just leave it inside their front door. Uh, Are okay. you sure we might need that later? I can't see a connection between the child, the sign, and the book. I don't know what they were looking for, but I mean, if but, we need to, we can always go back and ask them for it again. But they were looking for those specific things from what you said. They seem to be, or at least whatever it was told to look for, that matched what it was looking for. I mean, who needs a shipping manifest? Well, who from hell needs a shipping manifest? Uh, and a small child and the sign for the local inn. I mean, none of them are even magical. That makes it even more important that we figure out what they have in common. Mm -hmm. And there's a fourth one that Virendel went after. That's the one that came back with the sign. Okay. Yeah, there, there, there was one that was killed before it got to go get anything. Yeah. Uh, and so weirdly enough, object. that one had gone towards the water, but came back with a sign, which means it actually had flown around quite a bit. Um, you can kind actually, of conclude although, from that it might it might not have found the thing it was looking for at first. Actually, in the in the building, I'll leave a note saying, uh, "Apologies, uh, a monster attacked your place and took a book." Uh, we have the book as we try to figure out what was going on uh, and then he'll sign it, the Phoenix uh, Champion. <laughs> wow. I mean, I was just going to wait for someone to come and then take it as, like, advise them that we're, we're taking it as evidence and that we'll give it back once we figure mm -hmm. out why. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know where they are, so he'll just leave a note and they can contact us later. Okay. Uh, you leave it on that front step and you can hear someone swearing loudly from upstairs. Uh, what the hell is going on here? It's a woman's well, voice. He will go in to leave it inside uh, the door. If he hears someone there, he'll knock. Okay. Yeah, I'll, and, and I'll go in because I have I'm the person people recognize as having some authority mm -hmm. with law Keep enforcement. The cops. Exactly. Um, so... So that second floor building uh, was half apartment, half office. Mm -hmm. And up there, you actually find uh, Emma. You met Emma Doyle briefly at the party. Uh, she is the leader of the Shipwrights Guild. And right now, there she's There is surveying. a connection. The, she's now... Two people uh, that were at the party. Uh, examining the damage that was left behind mm. as this creature ravaged the place looking for whatever and trying to figure out what happened because she wasn't there at the time. Um, and so when you come in, um, uh, who's in the lead? Is it is it Silas with the book, or is it uh, Annie with the the law? If Annie wants to be there as the police, yeah, Silas will just stay. It, behind it'll her. just be easier to like take it as evidence mm -hmm. than cryptically take something, leave a letter. That's much more sketchy. Mm -hmm. well, Makes it look like you're the one who took it and did all this. <laughs> Uh, Emma uh, displays her uh, extensive knowledge of sailing lingo, mostly the swearing parts, uh, before she notices that you're standing at the top of the stairs. Um, or the kind of not, well, the door's open, so you're standing uh, in the open doorway. Kind of knock. What the? Oh, um, yes. So there was a situation. There were some creatures that were looking for some things, and they seemed to have dug for specifically this book. Mm-hmm. Is that what explains all of this? And she suggests the, the carnage. Unfortunately, 
Hmm. Um, for the time being, I need to keep this book uh, for evidence to try to figure out why they were looking for it. Um, what book was so important that she kind of holds out her hand to, to take the book from you to take a look? Uh, I'll, I'll tell her which one, what it is. It's the ledger for this ship. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll return it once we figure out why the, they were looking for this and the sign for the three bells and a small child. We just need to figure out what these things have in common. Are they coming back? Do I have to worry about uh, this happening again? The ones specifically that came to get this today are dead. Well, that's a small blessing. A big one, really. But they were looking for very specific things, so we don't know if they might, the person wanting those things might send someone else. Right. So. Well, I can't imagine anybody we would want that that uh, log. That ship's been gone for a long time. <coughs> gone as in no longer in action, or? Sunk, I presume. Didn't come back into port. It's been almost five years now, I think. Or something around there. That general uh, sort of shared uh, waving of the hand that everybody's been doing since the Great Confusion settled in. It could be five, or maybe it was longer or shorter, as that time seems to not really be as cons considerate. And I meant to have a name for that ship. I will have a name for that ship. Does anybody have a name for that ship? I'll turn it on you guys. Who's got a name for the ship? Semi-serious, at least. Bodie McBoat face. A glorious grapefruit. I don't know. I did. I did put a bar of semi-serious at least. So I reject both of those on the on the on the simple premise bar. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm trying to think of one. The bright wave. Bright wave. Oh, that sounds pretty good. There we go. Winner for the first, the first name. I just didn't have time to think of a detail like that. Mm -hmm. So yes, the bright wave, which Emma informs you was was lost approximately five years ago. Never made it back into port. Hmm. If and I think of anything else, I'll let you know. And I'll offer to, to help tidy up at least a little bit. She accepts your offer, because it's a lot of shit that go through. And you can see that, that some of this is shredded. It was kind of not as, as clean and neat as it should have been. Um, things are just toppled. Bookshelves are turned over. Um desk is turned over, it's it's drawer kind of pulled out uh, hard and just sort of flung everywhere. Yeah. Um, and that's where we'll leave it. Uh, we'll have Dudex show up at the beginning of next session. You can chat with him. I think that'll be a good place to, 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 lump, to yeah. jump into. Uh, Silas will help clean up with uh, his cantrips. Okay. That's Mage hand, mending, prestidigitation, that sort of thing. Yep, that's definitely appreciated. The mending especially because there was there was an old chair that she had there and it was broken into four pieces, but the mending is able to to put it back together. Um, it was already half I help broken mostly with pieces. organizing the paperwork because I'm good at that. Okay. Are you snooping while you're organizing or just organizing? Is there a natural Passively tendency? organizing? Uh, passively, you mean passively snooping, not passively organizing. Yeah, pa passively snooping, yeah. <laughs> well, like if something stands out, I might read it but okay um make an investigation check just for fun as we end up here okay she has a lot of records for a lot of ships uh more than just the the shipwright she also does a lot of actual cargo dealing which is probably where she actually funds her, her business from um, and there are numerous uh, logs, which are for ships that have gone missing. Um, some of them definitely uh, predate her. So she probably inherited this business. And that's all you're going to get for 12. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're going to, to bring it to a close. Oh, it is 6 p.m., yeah. It is 6 p.m. That's why I'm hungry. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, playing, guys. And... Uh, yeah, uh, that encounter was, it was not as deadly as I had hoped, which sounds wrong, but 
uh, the, the, the string of threes was kind of weird. Or string of sixes, I guess. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some other dangers that can happen. It's not all about death and dismemberment. Sometimes it's about losing allies. Uh, and I'll subconsciously, ju just to note, I'll subconsciously kind of organize with those missing, like, in their own section. Okay. Can I do one more thing? Uh, all right. As I help tidy up, actually, I'm, I'm, I, I, I forget if I came along with them, but uh, I'll do ascending to Melora. Yeah, that's something I was going to suggest, and then I forgot. Okay. So the sending is... Actually, I, I don't have to write it down. Melora, we are... Or we will come for you. The command word for Graveler is motherfucker. <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs> There is a response. Oh, cool. I'm scared, but I'm alive. And now I know why Graveler followed me so quickly. Because I use that word a lot. <laughs> so, confirmation of living... Um, you can make an insight check to read between the lines if you want. Okay. Twenty-eight. Melora is definitely putting on a brave face. She started with "I'm scared," and it was probably the most true part of the entire message. But she's tough. She's taking care of herself. She's she's lived on the road with the caravan for years. She's only got a few throwing knives and a couple of daggers with her. But she's also got Graveler. Yeah. So long as he doesn't get called back. Right. And when doesn't he usually here. like just turn back into his stone? He uh, sort of, yeah. yeah. The stone remains even after he's been summoned. Kind of comes okay. out of it. Ah, uh, I thought he, I thought he literally just like the stone became him, and then I don't kind think of I described it that way, but that, I, that could have been. I don't think it was ever like specifically described what happened, mm. but that's what how it happened in my brain. Yeah. In my in my mind it was a portal to the to the uh plane of earth where he normally okay. would reside. Okay. So sort of a portal, not exactly, but a connection. So, uh congratulations, you have a confirmation that Melora is alive. Graveler is alive. Somewhere else. So while it has been serious for some of your allies, you were victorious. You saved a child's life, and a lot more destruction could have happened. You met a very strange person named Tasser, mm -hmm. who seems to be operating on an entirely different level. But he did mention something about saving Catherine. Yeah. So he, he knows things. He's just not sure. And because what I have say. a name to use for him, I can send him ascending too, if we really need him. And possibly just be ignored. Yeah. It's, it's a name. It's a name of some kind. So uh, I want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching. We're going to be a bit of a break because there's a convention in our way, <laughs> which uh, I'm going to be running a couple of games because I'm insane. Uh, and then we'll return, I believe it is uh, October. <laughs> By the time yeah, we return second again. weekend of October. So uh, uh, thank you for watching. You can check up the back episodes, except for the one lost episode, sad. Um, find them at, on YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1 under the Legends of the Drowned Isles general playlist or the Campaign 2, the Great Confusion playlist as well. Uh, you can also find us uh, sometimes on Sundays when we actually play 3 o'clock Atlantic time on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. So, again, thanks to my players. And we'll be back next month. <laughs> oh, that's a while away. Mm. To find out what Dudek has to say. Night, folks.
Good night.